beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Indeed, we have been on this mountain learning the ways of God, feasting on the light of the Spirit in company of our fathers in company of the veterans of the gospel within this place and i am honored again seeing the servants of god here leaving their schedules their programs and just to camp and tabernacle with god it takes a lot of sacrifice a lot of sacrifice and then it will never tire me to really celebrate our father when i saw him just jogging and smiling i i i was i was not just smiling i was receiving it as an impartation for myself <laughs> hallelujah tonight the lord is going to do us good in this place I know that there are many of us who have made all kinds of sacrifices. Some of you are pastors, leaders of groups, businessmen. You have sacrificed so much to be here. One thing I know about God is that when you invest time, you invest passion, He will honor you in no small way. This I know. Hallelujah. And so I'd like us to be very, very attentive tonight very attentive i'm going to be praying we'll be ministering deliverance ministering to the sick but let us open up our hearts so that we receive the final dose of the revelations that god has been bringing and so where you are standing please lift your hands to heaven and just bless him and ask him for a visitation jesus i have come again i have come again i have come again Go ahead. The angels are singing Hosanna in the highest. The angels are singing Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. The angels are singing Hosanna in the highest Hosanna in the highest Hosanna in the highest The angels are singing O 
sana in the highest. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Your hair, what hair is your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Oh, that's our desire tonight. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Your name, what is your name, breathe, Lord. The name above me. Help us tonight. Open our hearts and give us understanding. In Jesus' name I pray. Please be seated. God bless you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Part 3, this is the final part for this conference. We have been dealing with the subject of spiritual strength, authority, and even capacity in the spirit. That as a people we need strength, we need capacity in the spirit to be able to do that which we need to do for the kingdom. We require strength. The Bible says, if you faint in the day of battle... It says your strength is small. And so we have been considering the spiritual factors that are responsible for enlarging our strength and authority and stature even in the spirit. And number one, we looked at the law of submission. That one of the ways we derive power and strength in this kingdom is our ability to submit to to Christ to submit to the government of heaven and that the hallmark of our submission is when we are able to say nevertheless not my will but thy will be done I'm doing this recap because it's important that we all be on the same page that if you want power with God dominion and strength capacity and stature it will be on account of your submission you want the authority and the ability to resist the devil so that he will flee. The Bible says, submit yourself. It says, before the Lord, under the mighty hand of the Lord. And then, from that posture of submission, you can resist the devil. And he will flee. Isaiah also told us, he says, Has thou not heard, has thou not known, the everlasting God, the Lord, the maker of the ends of the earth, that he is not weary, neither does he faint. There is no searching of his understanding. Then the Bible now begins to say, Even the young men will be weary, the youth will utterly fall. He says, But those who wait upon the Lord, they will renew their strength. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you all. I'm just spotting... The pastor from Oka, may God bless you. May God bless you. Can we find a space for him somewhere there? Is it possible? Please. Please just look for a space for him at the minister stand. The Lord honor him. Let's give him that honor. May God bless you. May God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The law of submission. Everyone say the law of submission. Rebellion against Christ and his government will lead to weakness in the spirit. We are never able to do much for the kingdom when our strength is small. You want authority over demons, you want to speak and that there be a performance to your words. It will be at the instance of your submission. Remember yesterday we considered the story of the centurion. When Jesus came and 
he beckoned on Jesus to come and heal his son. Here's what the Bible says. Jesus said, you are an honorable man. I will come to your house. But he said, no, for I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me also. And by reason of my authority, I can say to one, go, and he will go. I can say to one, come, and he will come. I can say to one, do this, and he will do it. He said, Jesus, I know that you too, you are under authority. Because this kind of power as a man cannot just be because you are the word. You are under the authority of the government of heaven. Therefore, speak only. There is a government that backs you. And Jesus said, who taught you this? I have not found this faith. No, not in Israel. That means every time you say the word only and nothing happens, it might be a question of a verification exercise that you are not done submitting in truth to the authority of Christ. And I did tell us that submission to authority does not just mean acknowledging that there is a government higher than you. It's more than that. The language of those who have totally surrendered is nevertheless not my will but yours be done never forget this nevertheless i showed us yesterday that in gethsemane the first time recorded in the bible where the father and the son had different wills until then they have been a united force everything the father wants to do is what the son wants to do is what the spirit wants to do but in Gethsemane, for the first time, the father wanted the sacrifice, but the son wanted a possibility of renegotiating salvation. He says, if it be thy will, let this cup pass. But nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Authority in this kingdom is derived from our submission to Christ and to his government the bible calls him the head of all principalities and powers the head of them and then this morning we consider the second key the law of encounter very very important the bible says but the people that do know their god they shall be strong and they shall do exploits we examine scripture after scripture seeing the power of encounters that encounters produce and create conviction and that an encounter is a platform for exchange where you exchange your weakness for his strength we looked at the life of jacob for instance and then we considered john 4 the story of the woman at the well she came and met jesus she started with him being a stranger and eventually her perception continued to change until we get to a point where Jesus said, I that speak unto you, I am he. He revealed himself to that woman. Immediately the Bible says she left her water pot. That's what happens when Jesus revealed yourself, himself to you. She left her business, she left her ambition and ran to the city and said, come see a man who have told me everything I have done. The people did not come because they knew Jesus. They came because they honored the testimony of the woman. But when they met Jesus for themselves, their testimony is now we believe. Not just because of you. We have heard him. We have seen him for ourselves. Encounters are powerful. They supply the ability and the stamina to stay. The ability to remain is based on encounters. He says, what then shall separate us from the love of God? And he begins to list several things that sustain the ability to separate men from the love of God. Is it famine? Is it persecution? And he says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. We must have encounters to last in ministry. We must have encounters to remain in the kingdom. That in the midst of all the activities of men, we must stand firm on the things that we believe and it is encounters that make this possible i did tell us in the morning that anything you are not proud to communicate and live by it is because you have not had the encounter most people are still ashamed of jesus 
ashamed of the gospel ashamed of standing for jesus why because you are not yet sure you you still suspect that loving jesus translates into a failed life and so you are trying to protect your success by managing this idea of being public about jesus he says if you deny me before men i will deny you before my father are we together and we took our time to pray and just allow the holy spirit breathe on us as we make commitments to surrender to love him and to want him more than church more than religion more than ambition to love him with everything that we have are you ready for the last key for tonight please pay attention to this key it will help you be strong in the lord ephesians says chapter 6 and verse 10 remember that's what we are considering how to draw strength amplified says derive your strength from your union with him let's celebrate our media i think they have done an amazing job from yesterday is this the best you can do this is beautiful this is excellent presentation hallelujah in conclusion he says be strong in the lord he says be empowered to your union with him draw your strength from him that strength which his boundless might provides be strong in the lord if you are not able to do much within your territory is because of strength remember i told us yesterday if an electronic gadget begins to shake and it's not working well say for instance a freezer a deep freezer or a fridge you notice when the voltage is low or when there is no power it begins to shake what you need to do is to increase the capacity the voltage and you find stability instability spiritually can be traced to lack of strength vacillations today i believe this tomorrow i do not believe this can be traced to lack of strength the third key very quickly so that we pray that controls finding strength with god strength to do much for the kingdom strength to move the kingdom forward strength to ward off the gates of hell is called the force of unity the force of unity genesis 11 verse 6 please listen very very carefully tonight show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter your end hmm. genesis 11 and verse 6 behold i show you a mystery and the lord said this was the building of the tower of babel that city of rebellion the zenith of the pride of men outside of the government of the christ nimrod the son of cush he says go to come let us make bricks and mortar let us build for ourselves a city whose tower will reach the heavens and the goal is to make a name for ourselves lest we be scattered from the earth the bible says that the lord said behold the people is one this is the problem now he's identifying the issue the people is one and they have all one language and this they begin to do in that state of oneness now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do i hope you know as at the time this is the only story we see where satan was not mentioned the holy spirit was not mentioned and yet the word impossible was also mentioned 
no assistance of the Holy Ghost here. No manifestation of any demon here. Just the force of unity. And God himself is testifying. These people do not acknowledge my government. They are in rebellion to me. And yet, because they are one, and they have one language, this they begin to do. When God tells you nothing, you have to understand who is talking here. If he's a prophet says nothing, you say he's seen in part. If he's some priest who says nothing, you say maybe he's backsliding. This testimony is coming from the lips of God Almighty. That there is a certain condition on earth that man can rise to. That nothing, absolutely nothing. Please keep that scripture there. Nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Hmm. Nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Are we still together? Ephesians chapter 4, please. From verse 1 to 6. Ephesians 4, from verse 1 to 6. Paul again is teaching the church in Ephesus. And let's pay attention to what Paul is trying to discuss here. I therefore, Paul, the prisoner of our Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of your vocation, wherein ye are called. Verse 2. It says, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Uh -huh. We're reading to verse 6. It says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body. Everybody say one body. Please shout it and you go say one body. It says there is one spirit. Say one spirit. It says even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Verse 5. One Lord. One faith. One baptism. One Lord, not two. One faith, not two. One baptism. The last verse. It says, one God and Father of how many? Please talk to me. God is the Lord and Father of how many? Not certain people. One Lord or God and Father of all. Who is above all and through all? I love Paul. I love Paul. This man. This man. That encounter of falling down under that light. That thing entered him. You can see the results. The, the kind of light that took that man from his donkey and dropped him. It, 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 re, it gave him a, a reorientation. The depth of revelation that came from that encounter is what is producing this kind of mystery. One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in how many of us that father is in how many of us hmm. write this down unity is a state of oneness unity is a state of togetherness please write it down Unity is a state of oneness. Unity is a state of togetherness. To be united, therefore, means to be in agreement. Write it down, please. To be united means to be in agreement. Number one. To be united means to be of the same motivation. And to have the same expectation. To be united means to have the same motivation. The same thing driving you. The same thing driving me. And it also means to have the same end. The same expectation. The same goal. That's what it means to be united. This is very powerful. The subject of unity is one that... 
we will continue to preach until we see the body of Christ come into that state of unity. Because the Bible says, part of the reason why the Lord gave the fivefold is for the maturing of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Is that true? Until we come to a state in the spirit called the unity of the faith. Unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, he says. And so, we have an understanding from scripture that there is a level of strength and stamina and capacity that a corporate people can never have until they are one. From Genesis 11 and Ephesians chapter 4, the Bible showed us the power of unity to be of one motivation, to be in agreement. I'm going to share with you, let's read four scriptures further to show us the value of unity and the force of unity as far as building strength, the strength of a people. In fact, politically or I think sociologically, we have a cliche that we have used. It says, united we stand. Do you know that? United we stand, but divided we fall. That saying is true because it is consistent with what the Bible says. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10. Please make sure you write. Let's do a few studies from scripture. Just an exhortation to cap this up and then we pray. First Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10. Help us media so that we'll just rush. The next scripture will be Romans 14 and verse 19. First Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren. He's speaking to brethren, those who are of the family of faith. By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing. And that there be no division among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. This is Paul admonishing the church in Corinth. Very powerful scripture. He says that there should be no division among you at all. You should be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Romans 14 and verse 19. The third scripture will be Philippians 2 and verse 2. Romans 14 and verse 19. He says, let us therefore, are we still together, Enugu? Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and the things wherewith one may edify another. Are you seeing this now? I hope you understand what he's saying here. That you pursue after the things that make for peace. In other words, stay away from the things that cause trouble and cause division. Follow after the things that make for peace and the things wherewith one may edify another. This is a very instructive scripture. That means before you do what you do, find out how many people will be hurt and destroyed by this my ideology. How many people will be... Is the body of Christ going to benefit from this action? Is this action going to bring glory to the name of the Lord? And then will the church suffer? Or will the church survive? Even if my denomination or my fellowship or my group benefits from it, will the larger body of Christ suffer or benefit? Scripture number 3, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 2. Then the last scripture will look at the book of Acts, learning from the early church, 4 and verse 32. Philippians 2 and verse 2 says, Paul now, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. You see it scattered through scripture. Paul keeps warning the church, admonishing them, beseeching them, do not play with this issue of unity. There are all kinds of enemies, neighbors, nations that are waiting to destroy you. Your strength is in your unity. Fulfill ye my joy, he says, that ye be like-minded, Having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. The last scripture, Acts chapter 4 and verse 32. Acts 4 
and verse 32. It says, And the multitude of them that believe were of one heart. This is the early church now. The model for us. The multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Watch this. Neither said any of them that out of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. This is the character of the early church. This was how they were mentored by Jesus directly. They were mentored that it's not the issue of my thing. The most important thing is let it benefit us. My revelation, my rema, it came from me. Mm -mm. That everything that comes is for the supply of the body. Not just for the benefit of an individual. Are we learning something already? Very, very important. Now, let me show you a scripture while I was studying, preparing for this. This scripture, it, it kept ringing in my spirit until I brought it and added it to this teaching. <laughs> We're going to look at two accounts of it. Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3, we'll begin our reading from verse 22. Again, Jesus is teaching. Learn a mystery here. Please look up. Most times we have taught along these lines. But we have taken that teaching out of context. Let me put it in context now so we understand what Jesus is saying. The scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, this was when he casted out the devil from a demoniac. They said he had Beelzebub. Now in ancient times there were all kinds of demon spirits that they believed controlled all different aspects apollyon leviathan abaddon all kinds of demon spirits and this he said is beelzebub and by the prince of the devils casted he out devils so they are questioning the source of his power and his authority to be able to cast out a demon like this 23 and he called them unto him and said unto them in parables how can satan cast out satan that means there is a law that governs results how can satan cast out satan 24 now and if a kingdom be divided against itself what did he say that kingdom cannot that means the strength of that kingdom is not in the blocks that built it the strength of that kingdom how did Jericho go down? Even though it was an advantage, but there was an insider who cooperated with an outsider that helped to bring down Jericho. I hope you know that. When the en there is no enemy within, it is said the enemy without can do us no harm. The most dangerous enemy is not the enemy without. It is the enemy within. Are we learning something? A kingdom divided against itself, it says, cannot stand. Next verse. Watch this. And if a house be divided against itself, that house also. So this is a law that is applicable for the stability of kingdoms, the stability of houses, the stability of spiritual families, the stability of a territory. You are able to stand and withstand darkness to the degree that the force of unity is in place. Now, here is the mystery. 26. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but hath an end. An end comes to the reign and the dominion of that system. 27. Now, you see where we keep making mistakes. Read this now in context. No man can enter into a strong man's house. Stop. <laughs> I love scripture. You are intelligent people and you went to school. With respect to what we have been discussing, what made the man strong? What made his house strong? Because the Bible here is talking about unity and its ability to provide strength. So this strong man you are calling is not a strong man because of physical might. He is a strong man because there is a formidability in his house. 
Jesus is teaching about unity. That any nation, kingdom, family, house that is divided, it has lost its strength. Now he's showing you in a parable. No man can enter into a strong man's house. So by the definition, contextual definition, no man can enter into the house of a man that is united and formidable. That's what makes him a strong man. Are you getting it now? And spoil his goods, except the first condition. If you want to destroy a strong man's house, the first thing you look for is to bind, please keep it, keep it media, to bind the strong man. Wow. <laughs> when you read the Bible, apply some intelligence to it. Don't just read it. It's spiritual. How do you bind the strong man? If you were Satan, God forbid, and you wanted to bind the strong man from reading what I've told you, how do you bind the strong man? So you don't bind people by putting cords on their hands. You bind them by destroying what made them strong. This is your Bible. The first assignment is to look for a way of dismantling that cord of unity. And the Bible says if it happens, although the man was once a strong man, although the nation was once a strong nation, although the territory was once a strong territory, you have bound them. My goodness, my God. Although the church was a strong church, although the ministry was a strong ministry, the way you bind the strong is to disunite them. Enugu, are we, are we following now? This is a very prophetic message, not only to the church, but to the territory. No man, whoever this man is, we know he's a stranger. And whoever this man is, we know he's a thief. Because his assignment is to come and steal the spoil. But the, the man will sit down and say, how do I penetrate? These men are strong. What makes them strong? Unity. How do I penetrate this church, this system, this nation, this family? I must bind the strong man. And how do I bind the strong man? Next verse. Well, we can stop here. The next he was talking about blasphemy because he was sad that they disbelieved him. Just keep it at 27. Have you learned a lesson here? We are going to look at the synoptic account of Matthew. Same story, but a different expression. Matthew chapter 12 now, still from verse 22. I pray that God will open your eyes to see this. I am showing you the force of unity. That it sustains the ability to provide strength. If the Bible gives us an assignment and says be strong in the Lord. Then we must know how to draw strength from our submission. Number one. If there are people under the anointing, just help them. From our submission, number one. And then from our encounters. But also from our unity. Watch this now. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil. Look at this kind of condition. Possessed with a devil, blind and dumb. And he healed him. In so much that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. It was a spectacular miracle. And all the people were amazed. And said, is this not the son of David? Are you learning unity? But when the Pharisees had it, they said, This fellow does not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. Uh -huh. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Next verse. If Satan cast out Satan, he, he is divided against himself. How then shall this kingdom stand? This is a spiritual law. It's not an opinion. Next verse. If I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judge. 
But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. 29. Or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house? Verse 30. He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathered not with me scattered abroad. Are you seeing the power of unity? Many churches, many individuals, Enugu as a city, the east of the Niger, Africa as a continent, we have not been able to rise to a point of power and stature, spiritually and otherwise, because Satan, knowing this law, has a singular assignment. Divide husband from wife. Divide children from parents. And you have rendered them powerless. Let me give you a secret. When Jesus walked upon the earth as a man, do you know that as a man he did not have strength? Do you know where his strength came from? Bible students. <laughs> do you know where his strength came from? Let me tell you the day the strength of Jesus started. The day there was a united scenario of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit at Jordan. The day the heavens opened, the Father spoke, the Holy Ghost came, the Word was there. That was when power started. Read your Bible. Until that time, there is no mention of invisibility and miracles. Provided that unity was not established. John baptized the word. The heavens were opened. The Holy Ghost came. The Father spoke and identified. When that trinity, that equation was complete. No power in existence. They tried to push Jesus off a cliff. He pushed them back. They tried to kill him. Nothing happened. Now, when Jesus was about to die, it was impossible for him to die. Because he had to be bound as a strong man. How was he bound as a strong man? The Holy Ghost had to leave him in Gethsemane. It's in your Bible. If the Holy Ghost did not leave Jesus, hitting nails on his hand would be a waste of time. A kingdom that is not divided against itself cannot fall. So when the father wanted redemption to happen, watch this. He said, look, for the first time, the trinity will have to be separated. So that Jesus can become weak. Weak enough to die. It's called the hidden wisdom of God. This is what Paul said, if principalities knew, they would know they are not the ones who defeated Jesus. That Jesus himself came out of that alignment so that he can die. Are we blessed? The moment the Trinity was in place, everywhere Jesus went, power, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, he went about doing good healing all they that were oppressed of the devil why for god we see god we see holy ghost we see jesus the equation is complete that equation of unity was in place jesus himself said i can of my own in isolation to this united force i can do nothing so when god wants to help a man god picks that man and connects him to a larger body of graces for the purpose of unity and you will find out that the strength you did not have as an individual you can have as a corporate people watch this if you ask me to lift this up i'm an adult look how difficult it is to lift it up with one hand are you seeing that now but does this mean this cannot be lifted can it be lifted let me have two or three gentlemen. If you are not strong, don't come here. 
not with the might of heaven alone but physically two or three gentlemen stand here stand here you stand here watch this hold it too are you ready now let's try it now what as anointed please drop it as anointed as i am this thing did not respect the fact that i was alone there are some things you cannot do alone. here's how the bible puts it sit down sit down sit down it says it is not good for man to be alone he was not just talking about a wife he's saying it's a risk when you are the only one standing if you are not in a company of strong people, there is a limitation as far as territorial dominion is concerned. When he sent them, do you know why Jesus sent them two by two? Go and read your Bible. He never sent them one by one. When the animals were coming to the ark of Noah, they came how many? See, this kingdom has mysteries. And until God opens your eyes, this is the assignment of the spirit of revelation. That all men may see. Unity is not the issue of just agreeing. It's a risk to be divided. For 30 years, Jesus kept moving as if he was a scam that he was a savior. Jesus would move. He had playmates. They would push him left, right, and center. Yet that was the logos of God. But the day the heavens were opened, the Father spoke, the Spirit came, Jesus received. When that trinity was in place, it was an invincible formation that could not be destroyed. Enugu, hear me. East of the Niger. The kind of revival that God wants to bring across your territory is a revival that no single church will be able to birth. No single man of God, no matter how anointed. Individually, there are things we can do. But there are certain prophetic things that will take a united people. If this is what is coming from heaven, and I stand with my pride to receive it. It will break me down. Even though it is from God. I will need other people to hold it. So the prophet is holding it. The evangelist is holding it too. The businessman is also supporting it here. As a prophet, listen. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. As a prophet, I can make a lot of noise. I can prophesy. Is it not when there is a venue and there are people that I can pray? According to Genesis 42 and verse 1 and 2, even a prophet, when there is no food, he can die. Give us Genesis 42. Let me show you something here. Genesis 42. The force of unity. Never forget this message. 42 from verse 1 and 2. Please leave it. Now, when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, the prophet said to his sons, why do ye look upon one another? Verse 2. He said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy for us from there that we may live and not die. So the man of God can be a man of God. But if there is nobody to lift his hand in ministry, you will live as if God did not call you. You will suffer as if you are not anointed. And yet the anointing is on you. Why? Because there are things you cannot do alone. Even Jesus on his way to Golgotha, he became so weak he had to fall down. It took another man to help him carry the cross so that he would arrive there. He would have died on the ground. If he died on the ground, he would not be called a cross. He had to hang on a tree to be called a cross. Everybody say unity. Do not forget, united we stand, but divided we fall. So we are discussing how and what makes a man strong. The Bible gives us its definition of a strong man. A strong man is not a macho man. A strong man is not necessarily a wise man. A strong man is a united people. 
the Bible calls a strong man. A strong man is not an evil man necessarily. We have a narrative. Every time we say strong man, we think he's just a demon. No. In the Bible here, it is the outsider that is an evil man. The strong man became strong because his house was kept in unity. How did war happen in heaven? We are Bible students. Have you studied how war happened in heaven? Satan decided to come and he began a proposition to one third of the angels according to the authority of scripture. He began to sell and market an idea that we can run two parallel governments. I can choose. You can worship me or you can worship Jehovah. And there was war in heaven. Satan was casted to the earth when he got to the earth the bible says there was no place for him when god made man eve came out of man the garden of eden there was perfect unity when satan wanted to destroy man here's how he came he isolated the woman out of the man because she was supposed to walk under his authority and provided she was conscious of his authority Satan could not penetrate them. But he isolated the woman and said, Woman, forget about your husband. He may join you later on. But what is the discussion? What did God tell you people? A wise woman would have said, Let me call my husband. He will be the one to talk to you. But she now took loss in her hands. And Satan said, I found it. By the time he was done with Eve, the glory had departed. When I found this key in the spirit, I knew that I was ready for an unbeatable life. My unity with heaven, number one. I show you how you can have a formidable ministry. How the east of the Niger, there is no charm and no power of darkness from hell that will just penetrate a family and be killing people like that. Believe me when I tell you there is someone in that family there is someone within that neighborhood who would have agreed with Satan to say, come. The Bible says Jericho was such a formidable building. Nothing could go out. Nothing could come in. But there was a woman called Rahab. She was a prostitute. Even though the narrative later profited the kingdom, but the principle still remained the same. For as long as there was nobody to attend to the nation of Israel from inside, even though they were a covenant people, they were limited until they found access through that woman. The man who was going to destroy the nation of Israel was not outside Israel. It was Haman and he lived with the king in the palace. Can I tell you, Haman's goal was not only to destroy Israel, it was to one day take the position of that king. How do you know? When the chronicles was opened, and the king called him, and said, what should be done to this man? Immediately, without thinking twice, he said, let the king give him his royal robe. He thought he was the one. Let him ride upon his horse. He said, go and do it to Mordecai. And the king said, wow. Haman said, ah, for Mordecai, I thought it was me. He had been eyeing the throne. It was only a matter of time. Now watch this. There are certain levels of revival that if it is to come upon this land, there are certain levels of superior end time mantles, end time anointings. No matter what the individual efforts of the churches, the men of God, the politicians, the business people, no matter what it is, that formation of king, priest, prophet, until that formation is reformed, there is a level of God's glory that cannot be hosted. The nation of Israel always preserved this formation. King, priest, prophet. And it was an invincible formation and no arsenal of darkness could penetrate them. But now, 
what the devil has done to the church is that he has brought us to a point where even though we are well-meaning people our concern is just our personal projects it doesn't matter what happens to the body of christ once my church is being built i am okay it doesn't matter what happens whether the devil is killing and destroying people whether there is moral decadence in the land i don't care no matter what is happening in Enugu, it's not my business. Provided nothing has come to my neighborhood. I hear that a pastor lost his wife, or lost his child, or lost something. That's his cup of tea. After all, we don't believe the same thing. And while you are there, you do not know, O oh Esther, that when Mordecai is done with those outside the palace, he's also going to come to those within the throne. That was what Mordecai warned Esther. He said, don't think when Haman is done with us you will be spared because you are also a jew are we together now one of the indices to measure the spiritual maturity of a territory is when believers ministers of the gospel men and women of god obtain grace from god to now begin to look beyond their personal progress beyond their personal progress to look at the advancement and the corporate growth of the body i know my church is going well my sons and daughters are doing well but is the body of christ in enugu state doing well is the body of christ within the east of the niger doing well if the body of christ is not doing well you must learn the art of carrying the burden and the pain of the body even if it does not affect you directly Are we together? You now see why I have profound respect for meetings like this. Where several men of God keep aside any denominational barrier. Keep aside who is a man of God, a prophet and come together. And say look this is about kingdom come. This is about a revival upon the land. Don't you ever think Satan loves what is happening now. And he will do everything to fight it. He will use offense. He will use all sorts of things to fight the unity. When a husband and a wife at home, just when there is a prophetic word that God is opening a new season for that family, watch how the devil comes. Suspicions, attacks, and all kinds of things. A man who has loved his wife for many decades, all of a sudden they start having irreconcilable differences. And they don't know that there is a stranger joining their heads together. Beware when new seasons open for you. Because when new seasons open for you, one of the ways that Satan will seek to destroy those seasons is to bind the strong man. To bind the strong man means to bring you to a point where you are disunited. And when you are disunited, listen carefully, there is so much you cannot do. You may be praying and falling down personally. But you see the reason why we keep excelling as churches but the territory does not carry that signature of the power of god because we are still concerned with individual progress in every part of this nation and across africa there are churches being founded there are conferences happening there are conventions happening why is it then that the body of christ or the territory has not received that signature of the corporate move of god i will tell you why because sincerely speaking, if we are to be honest with ourselves, we are largely concerned about individual progress. To what degree am I doing well? Any other person that fails, that's his business. Let me just succeed. Jesus rebuked the Pharisees because when, for instance, the woman who was bent over for 18 years was healed, it was not the healing that was their business. It was who did the healing. Who will take the credit for it? And Jesus said, look how depraved the heart of these people are. And sadly speaking, it's still the same experience today. If a believer receives a breakthrough and the hand of God comes upon the person, we are not just interested in the fact that God gave a visitation. Our interest is through whose hand did God do it? We want to know so that we know who to give credit to.
Are you learning something tonight? The force of unity. Very quickly, let me give you three keys that are responsible for activating the force of unity. Three keys. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 from verse 9. And then I give you three keys. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. That's what, that's what is important. Not Joshua Selman. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Souls are being saved in Enugu. The most important thing is that Jesus is lifted. It doesn't really matter which prophet God used. Which apostle God used. Was Jesus glorified? Were souls saved? Are destinies being transformed? Well done for all the vessels he used. But more than building personal empires. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. Oh God. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 from verse 9. We have to pray. Two are better than one. Why? Because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, then one will lift up his fellow. Are you seeing the power of unity? It will be impossible for all of them to fall. If one becomes weak spiritually, if one is not doing well, East of the Niger, look at me. Keep that scripture there. Do you know one of the reasons why you have excelled financially in business? It is this same principle. So what happens is that I learned when a man becomes made by God and helped by God, he is mandated to gather people around a community. Am I right on that? I hope I'm being accurate on that. And then... He now gets a few boys and trains them. Is that true? Are you seeing the power now? While he's training them, sometimes he may not even be directly related to them. But he trains them. And then in no time they rise. Then they themselves get other people and train them. It is the reason why there is widespread prosperity in the land. Now, if only that one person says, nobody will rise, what happens when he dies? The territory returns back to square one. Is the reason why the departure of many people brings an end to certain things God is doing. Because they were not concerned about lifting and raising others. Back to that scripture, please. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe unto him that is alone. You see what I'm saying now? Woe unto him that is alone, even when he's anointed, when he falleth. For he hath not another to help him up. Next verse. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? Unity. Are you learning now? The last verse, 12. If one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord, hallelujah, is not quickly or easily broken. Three keys to activate the force of unity. Beloved people of God, co-laborers in the gospel, politicians, businessmen, if you understand my sermon tonight, if I drop the mic here, my coming would have been a successful one. Because by the next time we'll see, you will be flying on eagle's wings. 
on the strength of unity. Are we together? Number one, love. John 13, 35. The first key that controls the force of unity is love. Can I tell you this? Love is not just an emotional thing. It's a product of a revelation. When you love just emotionally, your love will not last. It will vacillate according to how you feel. I feel nice about this man of God. I feel nice about the east of the Niger. I feel nice about my pastor. And the day you don't feel nice, you don't love again. Love is more than a feeling. It is a choice and a covenant. The covenant of love is the ability to stay loving regardless of feeling. If you love just based on emotions, you are going to be in trouble. Emotions is largely a product of hormones. We are talking of covenant. God introduced covenants to manage man's vacillations. Because if it's just to leave man like that, Peter can say, Lord, I love you today. And by tomorrow, he denies him. The covenant. John 13, 35. Are we learning something tonight? By this shall all men know that in Enugu I have disciples. By this shall all men know that in the east of the Niger God has men. If ye have love, not for me. I'm not doubting your love for me, but your love for one another. Can I tell you this? Hating yourself is a way, is a dangerous way to live. Why should you have preachers who hate themselves? Why should you have family members? There are some of you, as family members, you cannot look at yourself eyeball to eyeball. Do you know that? Do you know that there are family members who cannot look eyeball to eyeball? And sometimes it may not be your fault. Just individuals who just get up and want to make things difficult. And they divide the unity and the advancement of that family. Everybody shout love. Let the devil hear you. Love. Love. You love your pastor just when he preaches a correct message that you like. The day he lashes out the flesh, you look at him. This church is time to change church. This man, I'm not understanding him in this last one week. And then after two years of rigmarole rolling around, with confusion and pain and regrets and sad stories to tell, God will say, still go back there. That was what happened between Hagar and Sarah. Abraham drove Hagar, but the truth is she wanted to leave too. There's no record of her saying, let me stay. With speed she left. When she met trouble in the wilderness, God said, go back to your mistress. Go and submit to her. That is the key to your advancement. That was how your blessing started foolish lot was also another example for us the first decision lot made outside of the influence of abraham took him to sodom every other decision he had made abraham had assisted him the first official decision outside of the partnership of abraham led him that means his prosperity was not his wisdom it was the product of a man who so loved him dearly can i tell you this you must make up your mind that the spirit of hatred, bitter hatred, pastors sitting among themselves and talking about other men of God, tearing them down, talking about members, talking about denominations, it is dangerous. Even if you pray in tongues afterwards, it is still dangerous. There must be genuineness of love. Please lay your hands on your head in one minute and cry to the God of heaven. Lord, take away hatred, bitterness from my life, from any good state. You are not just praying for yourself. Please pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of hatred, let it leave my life forever. I reject hatred. Not for my fellow brother, not for my fellow sister, not for a fellow servant of God. I reject hatred. Not for my fellow family member, my fellow business partner. Are you praying?
love. He bala shada brandege de bala kasuba. Number two, in the name of Jesus. Number two, Romans chapter twelve and verse ten. What is the second key that activates the force of unity in a church, in a home, in a territory? It's called mutual honor. Mutual honor is the second key that binds a people and makes them united. Can I be honest with you? Romans chapter 12 and verse 10. A people will never be united when there is no mutual honor. Mutual honor means honor that is communicated and reciprocated. Not one-sided honor. One-sided honor will never produce unity among a people. You can't criticize me and insult me and call me stupid and say let's be one. It won't work that way. Mutual honor. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and in honor preferring one another. Imagine with me for a moment that our father at his age came here on behalf of the eldership to introduce me and to open the gates for me. All these great servants of God, they came and they sat down and here comes this arrogant man all the way from Abuja and he comes to mount the pulpit just because he calls himself Apostle Joshua Selman. And I insult every one of these fathers, these veterans, downplay everybody and then people are shouting under the anointing and I'm insulting everyone. You will never invite me back to this city again. I show you why for some of you certain altars shot towards you forever because the day you climbed that altar you tore everybody including God. The only person who was not torn by that talk is you. And the eldership said mark this person package his honorarium and give him and never return him here again. Mutual honor. You've heard my teachings on honor. Please listen to them. I have taught extensively again on honor. It is one of the greatest spiritual weapons I have learned. Second only to encounters. Honor. The key to access. Any door that closes over you, it is dishonor that closed it. Dishonor to God, dishonor to men, dishonor to principles. Are we learning now? Yes. I watch this with shock. How sincere ministers of the gospel, sincere leaders in society continue to pay the price for violating honor. It is the, the price of this honor is too costly. It's not worth it. Are we together? There are some of you here, the reason why you may never have the opportunity to access the grace upon your pastors is because just because you saw them when they were starting ministry, that sense of honor is not there. Most pastors is when they go outside of their churches, you really see the grace that God gave them. When they return back home, ah, this man is here. Okay, let's listen. Lift up your hands for a blessing and they casually lift their hands and say, look at the man. They look at the cheap shoe and cheap watch he's even wearing to prophesy. And while you are saying that, heaven is watching you. And a stranger will come into the church with his heart open. Lord, I don't know who this man is, but I open my heart. Next Sunday, he's the only one who comes to testify. It's the reason why many workers in church don't receive miracles. Because they are familiar. They've seen the man of God when he was on jeans. When they were having leaders meeting, they saw him. When they even served food, he was eating banana in their presence. He ate, uh, swallow everything and what is there. Is it not the same hand? He even gave me some of it. I'm not teaching human worship. And let me also reciprocate. One of the reasons, respectfully speaking, why many ministers of God have lost their partners and their helpers is because of dishonor even to members too. 
members are also human beings just because they love and honor us as men of god does not mean we treat them like animals in the name of superiority members have a unique way of punishing you they will leave you in isolation they will leave you in pain financially and so on and so forth is the reason why a very wealthy man can leave his own church and go to another ministry and say any project that is happening please call me whereas in his own church less than one tenth of that amount he will only go to where he's honored not flattered honored he that honors me i will honor the bible says he that despises me i will lightly esteem are we together there are many young people who have dishonored their parents the bible says honor your father and your mother in the lord let, let me submit to you do you know why many young people in this nation it is not well with them it's not a cause they brought it upon themselves through dishonor there is such a mark that is like is, is, this dishonor has become fashionable in our world today it's a trend Many young people see some of our fathers. Some of you can see a father like our bishop now. And just because you have your small anointing and your prayer group or your ministry, if you have your way, you can even push him. If I'm on the street as Joshua Selman, if I see our father and our mother, the bishop, carrying something on their head, I stand before the God of heaven. I will come down and help them. Or at least I will instruct someone to help them. My biological parents, as I am today, if I ever see them lifting something and it's within my power to help them, apostle nonsense, I will throw it down and help them. I want to live long. This honor will kill you and cut short your life. I'm telling you this. Many young people, you see why it is not well with them. In ministry, in life, because they do not understand the power of honor. Yesterday, our media here were not giving us the best of presentation. And I challenged them in love yesterday. Only God knows all those who sat down together now in unity. Look what they have produced today. Within 24 hours. Can I tell you this? Servants of the living God here in the east of the Niger, it's time to keep all this petty jealousy fighting unhealthy comparison who has the largest church members who has the largest who has the greatest anointing who knows this one who has traveled abroad for international ministry let me tell you the truth i must submit to you let's not confuse it we are not the same that is a revelation we must humbly admit we are not the same however no matter how high god has lifted anybody we must be able to hold hands don't all these clicks that is based on we who have prophecy we who have money we who have revelation we who have gone abroad one day you will meet the person you are despising and he will be the person holding the key that opens the door for you someone shout unity shout it again say unity you may be sitting by someone's side right now and just because the person is looking like a poor person you don't know that the job you applied the child of that man who owns the company is the one sitting at your side just because you come to church and you see people humble and sitting down does not mean everybody is suffering there are many people they say turn to your neighbor and say god bless you and you turn and you look at your neighbor looking like and you feel it's an insult i don't even know why i'm sitting here and god says foolish person i put you to sit down here i ask the ushers to lead you here because this is the answer to your prayer i'm not being hard on you as from a standpoint of sarcasm it is so that you will learn you've heard me say i am a product of many anointings Forget that you see Bishop and the fathers here honoring me. I'm not stupid to know that these are fathers. I must be able to communicate that honor too. Not to stand and say, ah, they acknowledge. 
this is why many young people don't last long can i tell you this anytime anybody honors you you are not done until you reciprocate it don't be the one getting honor from everywhere acknowledge me and you are not coming and you must communicate it to match the gravity of what was given to you if i appreciate every one of these men of god and i tell them i love you sirs i appreciate you sincerely oh apostle you are a great man i love you sir oh i didn't even realize it was you blessings apostle god bless you we're together in abuja a few days maybe about a week or so ago are we learning something don't turn and look at a man of god and say how many members do you have um 200, 200. Uh, my friend we're talking about people who are doing something serious here and you are even coming let's be careful the person you drive today or you have your prayer group some of you already have your prayer group and you are already forming some of these ungodly cliques push it. can you prophesy no move this way you can you have a no 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 move this way do you have money i mean serious i'm not talking of uh, money to buy shoe and bag do you have serious financial resources listen servants of the living god some of us have made these mistakes some of these wealthy individuals today we had a chance to be close to them when they were not in we pushed them looking for those who had it at that time now someone else came and grew with the people who are millionaires today and you are now calling them and say i knew you they say i knew you too what did you do when you saw me that way don't come and tell me to bless you when you ignored me it is the person who stands by you to help you rise that is the person you stand by to support sit down are we learning can i tell you this i made up my mind that's why you see sometimes as a man of god there are younger ministries who send me text messages apostle we're a prayer group of five seven people we are just there and sometimes they think that i may not respond to them sometimes they come around for our meetings and i see them just young people seven eight you think i'll just say all these boys sometimes i can sit down with them to say gentlemen let me tell you i believe in where god is taking you wow we are standing with apostle is apostle god am i not a man listen you can do it you can make it where you are now it may look like you are small and sometimes you see them crying that encouragement a few years down the line you will hear that those people are on fire somewhere and they will still honor you because you showed them mutual honor when you fight somebody and the person still succeeds you are in trouble See them. You want to see the church in Enugu rise? Young people, don't see the fathers and make a mistake of dishonoring them just because you flew first class. Come down from your first class, push your designer bags, get on your knees, and say, Daddy, I'm just coming from the U.S., but I'm not stupid. I know you are here. Let the world see me while I honor you. And the Father will bless you and ask you, stand up, you're a great man. May you go far. That one statement already opens the door for the next level of your life. Fathers, while god is helping us and lifting us do not laugh at the young minister in your church who is writing songs that look off key don't look down at that young lady she's working while schooling that is a billionaire in progress are you willing to honor them can i tell you this you will never truly be able to criticize someone who honors you so much and you honor them back where will it come from most times 
there is the instincts in men to feel fulfilled. One of the indices that measure fulfillment is progress. When you downplay people's sacrifice, can I tell you this? I know we are different in revelation. I know we are different as far as the dimensions of God revealed to us is concerned. But I want you to know that every man who genuinely names the name of Christ and loves him is doing his best with the information he knows to do. You must be careful. There are people making mistakes, I agree. There are people in ignorance, I agree. But let's be careful. As we point fingers at people, especially in this end time, some of the most unusual men will be carrying mantles in these end times that will make some of us bend our head in shame forever. We must be careful. Enugu, united you stand. But divided, you fall. A politician can come out for election and fail woefully. And you see him and laugh at him and put your hand on your head till you fall down. He's watching you. That's your governor you just laughed at. The day he becomes a governor, he will look for where your church is. And he will say, they have a mad road there. <laughs> Why? These are the wisdom keys that many people do not pay attention to. I hope you are not just laughing. You are getting what I'm telling you. Praise the name of the Lord. Mutual honor. When I learned this, I never go to a place and I never go to a territory and dishonor the people there. If you give me the privilege of climbing your pulpit, there are times you see me challenging things and I'm hard on people. But I must always let you know that it's from a standpoint of love and not sarcasm. You will never hear me talking about any man of God to criticize. I will challenge wrong doctrines. I will challenge wrong things. But it is not a ministry God gave me to point fingers at people. No. You will never see me climb if... I climb on this pulpit and the rule of that church is no moving around the pulpit. This is where I'm going to stay till I finish preaching. It will not stop the people from hearing what they are saying. It will not stop fire from falling. Fire can fall while standing here. Listen, adaptation is proof of honor. You must learn to have a high level of adaptability. Many of you wonder why you see me preach across different denominations that have different doctrinal divides. I have my core beliefs. I have my core spiritual values. But I'm able to be flexible enough as this man is playing keyboard for me. Please stop for a moment. There are churches you don't play this while the sound is on. When you go there, don't say my own. I know how I charge my atmosphere. Have different networks in the spirit. So that you know how to come to connect to MTN, Airtel. <laughs> Sit down, please. I have to pray. I don't want to keep us here for too long. Are we learning something tonight? <laughs> Hear me. There are places, don't feel bad, please. There are churches you go to teach, maybe their ethics and their rule. Is that you either are in corporate or suit honor them don't go and say me i know what the day jesus appeared to me i was wearing a track suit i agree with you i'm not fighting your revelation but can you can you have that adaptation are you hearing what i'm saying now listen if we do not practice mutual honor i promise you this conference will only come and go and every other thing will continue that way. But for mutual honor. Mutual honor. If the protocol are doing a nice job, don't look at them and say, do your work. Well done, sir. God bless you. And they feel encouraged. Let somebody try to touch you and you see what they will do. Because you have honored them. A man of God comes and sows a seed of 10 million. Don't send him a text and say, thanks, God bless you. Abba, 10 million is much now. Have some time to honor the person and say, look, we appreciate this. All blessings come from God, but we realize that you have done this 
as a communication of love and honor for this building. And I'm the pastor. I feel it as a responsibility to come and say thank you. Or you write a letter. And the man says, because of what you have done, this is only the first phase. Let me tell you this. Honor prolongs benevolence. Anywhere you show honor, the benevolence has been given the strength for continuity. Is God speaking to us tonight? Again, someone shout honor. honor. Now, aside from the men of God, don't go there. All of you, I want you to stand and in one minute, walk up to someone and just appreciate the person and tell the person, I truly honor you. It doesn't matter whether you know the person or not. Don't come and waylay the man of God. Don't, please don't come and waylay the man of God. Go ahead. You are appreciating the next apostle. Some of you, you are appreciating your wife. I honor the grace of God upon your life. I may not know you. Don't look for the people you know or your church members. I didn't say to go to your church members. I honor you. Yes, I know you are a man of God. We fought last year, but it's over. It's over. It's over. We are all servants of God. It's the same heaven we are going to. Please return back to your seat rejoicing. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let your love increase. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. The walls of pride and prejudice shall cease. When we are your instruments oh look what is happening to the ministers my goodness the church is marching on the church is marching on regardless denomination Enugu, the gates of hell shall not prevail the church is marching on sing it one more time with revelation let the devil hear you know the church is marching on the gates of hell shall not prevail hear me Anybody that comes into your city to cause division, show him the gate of the city and tell him not in any good state. Carry your trouble and leave this city. There is a lot that God is doing. No, no, no. Please don't go to the man of God. The unity is all right. We've, 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 we've greeted one another. Just please go back so that we don't have chaos. We are going to pray. God sees your heart. God will honor you, man of God, and bless you in the name of Jesus. Are we together? That a time will come when a particular church is holding a crusade and a pastor that is not even related will pay for 30 buses and say transport people to and fro. If they ask you, say a fellow co-laborer has come to partner. What is the name of the church is not necessary. Just know that we want Jesus to be lifted. Are we together? Now, the truth is that, hear me, we will define doctrine. We will define modus operandi. Anybody who does not name the name of Jesus, and anybody who does not represent Jesus, is not part of those I'm talking about. I have to balance this. We are talking about those who fundamentally agree that there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There are certain beliefs that we may define. Don't worry. 
is not too much of a reason to cause division. Enugu, the greatest strength that will come will come from a united force. If somebody comes and says, I am a herbalist, I must destroy this church, suddenly you will hear voices from every altar. Zatos Kaparata. What did you say? And he said, no, no, no. I was just talking about one person. He said, no. There is no one person in Enugu where a united team. You want to attack one man of God? You will have to destroy all of us. And the devil lets you go. No man can come into the house of a strong man and spoil that man. Enugu, it is not the charms that the herbalists are making. That's not what is stopping the progress of the church. It is not the divinations and incantations. It is that the strong men have been bound. I'm here to lose them. To lose them. Can I tell you this? Provided a family is still fighting one another. This our firstborn is a millionaire. He will not listen to us. As if they are the ones who gave him the money. They have refused to acknowledge that it was through diligence. God blessed him. And they become entitled. You must bless us. And he says, continue your nonsense there. The day that family decides to be united. Forgive one another. Sir, we respect you. You came out of this family and today God has blessed you. We don't trivialize you. And he now looks and says, even though I am lifted, I am still your brother. You see that unity. They will now turn and say, where is the power that does not want this family to move? And the devil has to listen. Because everybody is saying the same thing. The moment you are saying something else, the devil has cheated you. One voice. The reason why many terrorists prevail over several parts of Africa and even our nation is because largely they have one voice. If the voice is destruction, they remain there. If the voice is mayhem, they remain there. Tonight God has come to shake the church in Enugu and east of the Niger to say it is no longer just about Catholic and Anglican and Presbyterian and any other church together we are a united force yes I know you may not pray in tongues like me but don't worry it's too small a reason we are still lifting Jesus high I know that you may not do this but and the devil says what happened now how do we destroy Enugu how do we and you will begin to see such a rise of prosperity and wisdom and increase and power the moment you see a man of god crying you don't need to ask him what denomination you are a servant of the living god why are you crying ministry i'm tired i'm about to give up and he said not when i'm here you are not giving up when i'm here is it not rent how much is it? Look, let's rally around. I know that you were careless. You made mistakes with your finances, but God can restore. But that shame, it is not the devil who will laugh at the church. Come, let us cover this shame. And when that is done, we can now teach you how to do it right. Can I tell you this? Many of you need to return back. Let me give you, let me challenge you. Go back and put a hashtag United Enugu Together we stand From this conference Let your family members know This is not a political thing oh. Let me give a disclaimer now So that you don't say Apostle came to do politics I'm a man of God I'm encouraging unity Call your brother And say my friend You've been in London for 10 years. You have refused to come and see us. It's alright. We came here and we had a message. There is a dimension of grace God is giving you that this family needs. We need you back. Come. There are dimensions that we may never experience. There is a grace God has given this man. There is a grace God has given this man. There is a grace God has given this church. There is a grace God has given this one. For this church, God gave them the grace for prayer. For this great God, God gave them the, the, the grace for consecration and holiness and purity. 
when you find out that the flesh is growing, one salmon, one salmon from that ministry will damage the flesh permanently. There are others God has given them the grace for wealth and prosperity. There are others God has given them the grace for leadership, excellence and administration. When you come together, you will become a balanced individual. Prosperous, holy, anointed with the spirit of revelation, with doctrinal soundness, having character, having prosperity, having maturity, having influence, having excellence. That is God's church, the body of Christ. Hallelujah. So when they tell you someone is sick and is about to die, you know you don't have the healing anointing yet. There's no need sitting down there and letting the person die because of ego. Like doctors recommending themselves. You can say there is a man of God I know in Enugu. There is grace on his life. Man of God, can you help me? One of my members is about to die. And he will stand in that office and say you have provoked that office. We will not lose one in the body. In the name of Jesus Christ. When that man is healed and you want the healing anointing, you can meet him. And say talk to me. God has granted you such a grace. I need this grace on my altar. And he says look. I had a revelation but I studied scripture. This is what I did. This do. And you will see what I saw. The church has increased. You are not having increase. People come to your church. Receive miracles and go. And there is someone God is increasing. Don't just say he's using charms and criticize him. Humble yourself. Man of God there is grace upon your life. And he says look manage some of these excesses you are doing in church all this jumping up and down settle down teach the people doctrine create an atmosphere that can allow responsible people come to your church now you have helped that person because he that told the person was just anointed but childish no immature no maturity no soundness of doctrine no coordination no excellence no leadership now you have introduced these missing dimensions members can now come and begin to stay because they have a pastor that reflects maturity that they can be members in that church you are a man of god you are doing well but you are always struggling financially you notice your members are also struggling financially don't start creating a theology out of your pain and say don't worry money does not matter you are failing in that area just admit it and find one who god has helped and granted grace it's amazing that what is a mountain to you someone near you already has the grace to turn it to a valley if only you can be humble to receive you had reverend dan's testimony and his dear wife 13 years trusting god for the fruit of the womb he would have remained like that till Jesus would come. Or he would have written a book that don't, the era of miracles are over. But there is always a grace within reach. Today, there are parents with twins, wonderful, bubbling children serving the Lord. Now, please look at me. We're about to pray. I apologize. I know my time is gone. Right where you are standing, whose grace have you dishonored? within your land that God has sent to be for your lifting your prayer life has gone down whereas there is a man of God seated here with the grace for prayer there are prayer groups here that you can encounter the grace for prayer and damage spiritual laziness once and for all have you ignored that grace I told you I will give you three keys for unity one is love two is mutual honor the third is forbearance what is forbearance accommodate weaknesses and limitations accommodate perspectives that are that are different from what you know it does not have to be what you believe for you to receive people no if it is not the way my church does it i don't believe it that is an error there is one lord there is one faith. There is one baptism. Forbearance is the ability to be accommodating. Yes, I know in your church you may have AC, very beautiful line arrays. But maybe this ministry you have come, they may not have all of those things. Do you have the flexibility to still forbear? 
forbearance is powerful i go to minister in many places and i have i'm generally a conservative person i'm not jumping 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 but i go for meetings and sometimes you see people jump and laugh and they're happy and they run up and down sometimes they even fly on one another like they're fighting wrestling forbearance the most important thing is to communicate christ i may not do that in my own ministry but you must be flexible is that true yes you must learn to forbear just because it is not the way you know it to be does not mean god is not there you must have the flexibility there is a way you pray the day you go somewhere and you find out that prayer is not done that way don't be too quick to conclude have a heart that accommodates this is the key to unity i'm connected to a lot of men of god people in ministry across the globe and sometimes for some of these people we have very differing perspectives in many things but it's not enough reason some believe in deliverance and only deliverance some don't, don't mention the word deliverance some don't believe it does it's not enough reason to fight we are not a political party here you can still hug yourselves and when the person says, ah, i'm seeing a demon somewhere and you don't believe in that don't just turn and say you have come with this your rubbish forbear 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 are you learning something tonight forbear forbear tolerate some of you have siblings who are talkatives when they greet you before they say how is mommy and dad is already one hour Brrr, and you are a quiet disciplined calculated and intentional individual you can get very wary and say how, how do you ever succeed making noise like this no no you must have a large heart that accommodates there are men of God who will stand on the pulpit and like our father Baba Deboe, they may be quiet. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody do this. But there are others when they stand on that pulpit, you'll be praying that the pulpit should not even fall. It does not mean God is not working with them. No. Just because you are used to it being a certain way does not mean it is the only way. You must have forbearance. hallelujah so if you go to a church if you don't like the dance group that is dancing just forbear it's only 10 minutes they have it's not enough to destroy your faith allow them finish dancing and go and sit down oh you don't like the choreography no problem just forbear then the children now come in with their special number they will make mistakes they are hard to fall they will fight one and just forbear allow the children be featured too don't sit down and be too mature and say what is this i came for i just came out of a retreat i know nobody is doubting your call but let the children also serve jesus hallelujah and you may go to a church and find maybe it's their thanksgiving and people are dancing they will take three steps forward and move back and move back and take just for beer. Don't sit down and say, look at how they are. these people are carnal. No, you are the one who is carnal. They are celebrating God the way they know. You must forbear. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, we are about to pray. I'm not wasting your time. Don't go around insulting pastors. Don't go around insulting members. Don't go around comparing pastors. Members sometimes are the ones who join the heads of men of God. Saul killed 1,000. David killed 10,000. When Saul hears, what do you think he will do? Oh, Apostle Joshua Selman came to town. Come and see what happened. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We do not have the ministry of outshining or the ministry of demeaning. We are only contributors to lift up the hands of the servants of God in the land. To the end that Jesus be revealed and Jesus be glorified. I am not in any way in the flesh better than any of these veterans of the gospel you see. What you see happen is an election of grace. 
and the privilege that God has given. I must be wise enough to know that even though they honor me, it is not to mean they are demeaning their own anointing. Are we together now? Don't come and thank God for you sowing seeds to my life. But make sure you also do it to your pastor too. Don't go around blessing other people and leave the primary person that God is using to feed you. It's hypocrisy. Love. Mutual honor. Husband, go back home and meet your wife. And say, wife, I don't want to take it for granted that every week you cook for me. Don't say I paid your dowry. That, some of those statements are demonic statements. It's not a Christian statement. Thank you. Thank you for having the discipline in the rain and in sunshine. And then you wife, when they are at, appreciating you like that, don't just say a hand. Uh -uh. Only a wise husband can produce such a wise wife. You, you see that now. You are balancing the equation now. And the devil that wants to cause trouble in that marriage, now is the one who is left for shame. And children, parents pay your school fees. They labor to help you. Don't come and say, I didn't ask you to, to, to you know, to, to uh, what do they call it? I didn't ask you to bring me here. That's, that's not a wise, that's a childish statement. Daddy, thank you. It was in my presence I saw people did not write exams. Some, their final year exams. But thank you for always granting me that school fees. Today I'm a graduate and I have come to honor you. Thank you, sir. Honor. Are we together? Somebody comes and does something nice for the city. Don't sit down and say, let them not do it now. No. Thank you, sir, for being thoughtful enough. We have been suffering lack of water here. You came and now brought borehole. Don't say instead of him to even make it electronic. He now made it. At least he tried. You see, there is a spirit we have in Africa that I'm praying the spirit of, of dishonor and ingratitude. If somebody brings a bag of rice, even if it's a small bag, thank God that he was thoughtful enough to bring it. Don't say at his level. Look at what he, he, he should come and carry this nonsense out of this. Don't think like that. Can I tell you this? Till when people bless me, whether it's 100 naira, whether it's 50 naira, it is with the same passion of gratitude I receive. If you like, bring one billion. You bring one naira. I am grateful to all of them. More than what they gave is the heart that can isolate you to honor you this much. Are we together now? Are you ready to pray? These are the keys that I have learned. Go back to your church and teach your workers. Heads of department, don't fight yourself. Ordained workers, don't fight yourself. This evil man, God will punish him for us in this department. And you are serving there, you will not receive the blessing that comes. Let me tell you this, men will offend you. Men are limited, but you must sustain the grace. Today, I am able to dispense the anointing with this degree of results. Because I am a product of many anointings. When I came, I sat down, sorry to have to say it. You saw me talking to our father before I came up. I held his hands and said, Daddy, I honor you and our mommy and I sincerely appreciate you. Thank you, sir. That's what I was saying. We were in Enugu, we were in Nsuka just a few days ago. Reverend Vindiolu was there. Our father, the bishop at his age, drove down to Nsuka. And I said, ah, this man at this age, he came with our mother this morning, she's still here tonight. Several of these people you see, only God knows the conferences and the programs that they shut down to be here. How dare you dishonor them because you are appreciating Joshua Selman. How many of me can change this city by myself? I'm only here for this night and I'm gone. But these are the ones who remain. Lifting up the name of Jesus in the east of the Niger. Never honor me at the detriment of these graces. Listen. Prayer groups. 
your little leaders that God, I, God is helping, don't despise them. Love them and respect them. That gentleman you see shouting and sweating under a tree, there is a grace upon him. Don't honor the men of God and ignore the protocol. You see how long these gentlemen have been standing? They have been standing even while you are sitting down. If this is a night vigil, this is how they will stand. Don't dishonor them. What of those who were about cooking for us? One of our mothers here has been doing <clears throat> the sacrifice that this woman of God has been making. She also came for the meeting. But the sacrifice. How dare you dishonor them? What of those who have been driving me around since I came? Some of these security guys, they are driving the cars. You see them running up and down. What of this cameraman? This gentleman has been walking up and down like as if he doesn't have what to do. Snapping people up and down. Whereas he too wants to receive. You must honor everyone. Without the person who sets the stage, the sermon can be effective. Without the person who fixes the mic, our media people are somewhere there. When I was lashing them yesterday, you were laughing at them. But those guys deserve honor. Because if this screen is shut down, what of you who left your house and came? Some of you since afternoon, you were here. No matter how, listen, listen. No matter how anointed we are, if you are not here, we are not in ministry. It's an uncomfortable truth, but it is the truth. In the multitude of men, it's a king's honor. If you have a vision without men, the vision will still perish. Please rise up on your feet. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. One more time. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Once you are standing, I'd like you to pray for the unity of the church in Enugu. Lift your voice and pray. Father, bind us together in love. Every church, mention the name of any church you know. Mention the name of any man of God you know. Lord, let us shelve away every prejudice. Mention the name of every ministry. Regardless denominational barriers, we make up our minds that this is the season of unity. It doesn't matter what assembly you identify with, locally speaking. United we stand. Divided we fall. United we stand. Divided we fall. Enugu united you stand. Are you praying? Divided you fall. East of the Niger, united you stand. Divided you fall. that they may be one as we are one that the preachers may be one as we are one having a sense of love one towards another genuine heartfelt sincere love having a sense of mutual honor one towards another beyond results beyond achievements having a sense of forbearance one towards another hallelujah now there are three things I'm going to do very quickly. Our time is up. 
we've had moments where we've prayed number one is I'm going to minister healing and deliverance in the next maybe two to three minutes just speak over those who are sick in body and those who have been oppressed number two I'm going to prophesy and speak prophetically over lives that these doors and these gates be opened number three I'm going to repeat what we did last year again I will ask our father the bishop and our mother when it is time alongside maybe a few pastors that will be selected to come and stand upon this altar representing the church over Enugu and the east of the Niger and they will stand and blow a shofar and announce a new season of strength of power of revival of transformation and of growth are we ready for that pray in one minute every burden that i came here with must leave now lift your voice and pray everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me everything that was lost shall be restored unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me everything that was lost shall be restored unto me Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I want to rebuke every spirit and every power that is not of the Christ. Sitting over the destinies of men. Now we are a united force. Away with offense, away with bitterness. From yesterday and today there have been massive outpourings of the spirit. I want to pray now. Very quickly. Father in the name that is above all names over Enugu state over the east of the Niger I come by the power of the Holy Spirit and I declare that every spirit sitting upon the glory and the destinies of man I decree and declare right now at the count of three as you shout the name Jesus those powers and those forces are dislodged I want you to bring them out. One, my God. Two, three, shout Jesus. I command those powers. Release destinies now. Release every destiny under captivity. Help them, please. I cross those destinies. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare right now fire from heaven. Every altar that will not release you and let you go we set it on on fire now we set it on fire now bring them out I'm still praying the Lord is showing me what looks like stones I'm seeing like three stones and I'm seeing it with the pictures of men on it this is what I'm seeing and the Lord is saying set it on fire I don't know whose destiny has been caged by the orchestrations of witchcraft. But right now at the count of three, as you shout the name of Jesus, may fire burn those altars. Are you ready? One, two, three, shout Jesus. Be released now. Be released now. Be released now. Be released now. Now I give the church falling day. I give the church falling. I give the church falling. Shut the gates, cut the nets, shut the bars. I give the church. I give the church. I give the church. 
Hallelujah. Now, I want to attack the spirit of delay. Hear me. As I pray this prayer, the power of God will come on many people. They will start running for some of them as I declare speed. Father, in the name of Jesus, every destiny that has been kept down by the power that raised Christ from the dead, at the count of three, let the yoke and altar of delay. One, two, three. Take speed in your life. Speed in your life. Speed in your life. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, I cross delay. I cross delay. I cross a short of us here. I grab past a break across the day. I cross delay. Delay in achievement. Delay in ministry. I rebuke you by the God of heaven. Hallelujah. Who is Okechuku? Okechuku, I'm hearing the name like Okechuku. We don't have the time. Okechuku, you are wearing, there are two of you. You are one. The other person is wearing yellow. Okechuku, this is what I'm seeing in a vision. There is an Okechuku wearing a yellow dress. Is there someone like that? Oh dear. What's your name? Come, stand. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. Let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The power of God is going to come on one of you right now. A strong anointing. Destroying every yoke that is not of God. Let it fall upon you now. In the name of Jesus. This door that I see closed for Okechuku. I declare it open right now. Open right now. Help them. Open right now. Hallelujah. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. I'm hearing a name, Elizabeth. There's someone with that name. We have to hurry up. We shouldn't stay. Ah, mommy. Elizabeth. A new chapter is opening for Elizabeth. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. Elizabeth there is a woman here you've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb five years five years one two three four five please who is that oh dear I wish we had time but we have to hurry up five years who is that person please very quickly let me know when that person is here because the season of that person has come in the name of Jesus Christ Elizabeth, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I decree and declare right now that everything that is stopping the opening of a new season, this lady going back, this tap that lady for me. Lift your hands where you are. I'm seeing oil coming on your head. I don't know you, but in the name of Jesus, even though I'm praying for these people, the Lord is saying, I should announce to you that a new season is opening for your life and your destiny. A new season is opening for your life and destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I declare, my God, I just saw like fire moving from my left to my right over Elizabeth. Fire. May that grace come upon you. Now, in the name of Jesus, let it bring to end every season and open you up to a new one. I declare this by the Spirit of God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I prayed a prayer in the morning and I'm seeing that thing happen again. The Lord is ministering to me that there are a number of ministers here. 
you have struggled at a particular level of grace but God wants to multiply his hand upon your life I don't know where they are but I stretch my hands I'm seeing the number 8 fire is coming on 8 people among the ministers here Father at the count of 3 may that grace rest on them 1 my God 2 3 take that fire take that fire help this woman please take that fire please help that woman in the name of Jesus take that fire new level in your ministry new level some of you have seen you climb ladders you are climbing ladders in the spirit it's a symbol of a new season step into that new season of glory in the name of Jesus Christ let me pray for the sick now please lay your hands Five years, the Holy Spirit is still speaking to me, trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Who is that? Is there someone like that? All of you? All of you? I want to pray for you. Please just lay your hand on your stomach as a point, a prophetic point of contact. Just let them be. That's all right. My friend. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Help him. Take that grace. You will never be the same again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, in the name of Jesus, please believe that there is a grace that can open the, the door of a womb. It doesn't matter the medical report. Just release your faith. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God, every power that is Papa Katuka Sikete Baliata, Magabu Zaziana Katuskete Brende Gelikata. Why am I seeing fire just rising from the altar here? In the name of Jesus, everything that has stopped fruitfulness, Enazira Sikate La Kojiata, Gare Katuziata, help that lady. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. And anything that wants to destroy your child, fruitfulness, fire from heaven is coming upon you right now. I open this womb now in Jesus' name. According to the time of life, I declare, return with your miracle children. Now. Return with your miracle children. Return with your miracle children In the name of Jesus Madam, I'm seeing something that looks like fire on your stomach I don't know why fire is burning on your stomach But in the name of Jesus Christ Whether it's for yourself or someone you're standing for Let there be a miracle right now In the name of Jesus Christ In the name of Jesus Christ Please lay your hands Let's pray for the sick We have to wrap up Father, I pray right now for everyone who is trusting God for a miracle in their health. Just help the lady that shouts now under the anointing. Don't bring her out, but just help her so she does not injure herself. I just saw a vision and I heard that sound. We are praying for the sick now. In the name that is above all names. Agree with me as I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wow. I've not even begun the prayer. I'm seeing the Lord taking away lump in the breast. Breast lump. It's going now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Now I rebuke every devil that is back of any infirmity. In the name of Jesus, be delivered right now. I command that spirit, let God's people go now. In Jesus' name, I bring you life and I bring you healing. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. Blind eyes be opened now in the name of Jesus. 
that ears be open now in the name of Jesus. All bone conditions be healed now in the name of Jesus. Blood conditions be healed now in the name of Jesus. Heart palpitations, system and organ failure be restored now in the name of Jesus. Every uri urinary problem, I'm seeing the Lord heal a urinary problem. In the name of Jesus, be healed right now. Someone, you have difficulty breathing. This has been even before COVID, so this is not about COVID. You have difficulty breathing. Sometimes you feel as if you are choking. The power of God is touching you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Any genotype here that needs to change, we change you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Every damaged organ, liver, kidney, heart, be restored now. Every infection in your body, I declare healing for you right now. If there is anyone here appointed unto death, that the devil has planned that you will not see the end of this year, in the name of Jesus, I command death to leave your habitation now. I command death to leave your habitation now. I'm holding my stomach because there is someone here having severe pain rambling around your stomach month in month out this continues to happen the power of god is touching you right now the power of jesus is touching you right now in the name of jesus christ any medical report here that is a death sentence cancer hiv hepatitis of all sorts in the name of jesus be healed right now Please believe it. Be healed right now. It's amazing how religion can resist the things that the Holy Spirit is doing. There were men and women full of human understanding but had no comprehension of the precepts of the Spirit. For you to be a scribe and a Pharisee, you had to know the five books of Moses, the Torah, the Pentateuch. You had to know it off heart. And Moses in that prophesied and says, A prophet shall God send to you was prophetically speaking about Jesus Christ the Messiah and when Jesus walked upon the earth although they had that in their head they still persecuted him until they killed him that's why Jesus speaking in John 6 verse 63 said the flesh profited nothing he said it's the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profited nothing he said the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life and Paul extending that statement said the natural man understandeth not the things of the spirit. He said, for they are spiritually designed. You don't use your five senses to understand the things of the spirit. Because it gets to a plane where every revelation you are encountering will wrestle every sense of logic that you have. So you must be able to ascend the heel of the Lord. Whether or not your mind understands. That's why we call it faith hallelujah that our life and our walk in this realm is absolutely hinged on the integrity of the one we are following and not necessarily on our degree of comprehension and what he's doing hallelujah and so he said a notable miracle i'm going to speak very briefly on what i titled notable manifestation of sons notable manifestation of sons we've spoken a lot about the manifestation of sons hallelujah Romans chapter 8 from verse 18 says for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time 
is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us then verse 19 says for the earnest expectation of creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of god hallelujah and the next verse says for the whole creation was subject to vanity not willingly but by him who subjected the same in hope talking about adam the first man handing over the rightful keys of dominion to satan hallelujah and so the earth groans and travails waiting for the manifestation of sins i need you to understand that all through bible history the only way that men give glory to god is when the deeds of god is seen and expressed in the eyes of men are you listening to me when no matter how supernatural a thing is if it ends in the secret god cannot be glorified are you listening to me because for god to be glorified men must be the ones to give him glory are you following me and therefore they must see and understand the goodness and the deeds of god and then as a response to what they see they will give him glory and give him praise and so when i talk about notable the word notable connotes being obvious being significant being outstanding worthy of note the bible makes us to understand in acts chapter 4 verse 16 the apostles had been doing um great things while jesus was around the bible records that when he sent the 70 hallelujah that they went and came back and said even the demons are subject to us through thy name so it was not exactly their first time of experiencing the manifestation of the power of god however the bible says this was a different one and what made it different it wasn't because the miracle was new it was because it was notable say after me notable it was notable done before everyone undeniable irrefutable beyond argument hallelujah a notable miracle and when the scribes and the pharisees gathered themselves together because they said through which name did you cast this out and peter began to preach a sermon and they brought themselves together they said brothers and sisters oh, well no sisters they're brothers praise god for ladies how come there were no ladies when they were conspiring to do all these bad things ladies that should be a thumbs up so are we agreeing that men are the cause of come on remember eve <laughs> hallelujah remember jezebel remember the mystery babylon was not a man was a woman upon the horse can i continue okay remember the mother of jesus <laughs> hallelujah okay that aside let's continue the bible says that a notable miracle although they they didn't believe god they didn't love the things of god there was no human way they would prove that this was not so hallelujah notable manifestations of sons the bible makes us to understand that special miracles he called them special miracles they were not regular miracles special miracles were wrought through the hands of paul such that handkerchiefs and aprons were brought together the bible says just leaving his body devils demons were casted out special miracles the manifestation of songs will not create the kind of ripple effect that the kingdom desires until everything about our lives become notable the secret of expressing glory to god through our life is that everything about our lives will be reckoned to be notable the bible tells us that many men live long however there was a man that caught the attention in the bible hallelujah what was his name bible students 
Sorry. Some people are saying, Mel, Mel what? Hallelujah. Who is the oldest man in the Bible? Come on. How old? Expo. Praise God. Now, several people live long. But how come we don't preach about the other people that live long? Something was notable about the longevity of Methuselah. The Bible tells us that there were many wise men. I mean the spirit of wisdom and creativity in Exodus 31 rested upon Bezalel. But the Bible tells us that there was something notable about the wisdom of Solomon. It was so notable that Queen Sheba had to come from the east to reckon with the fact that there was something notable about this man. And the Bible says when she came and saw the splendor of the palace and the manifestation of the artistry, the creativity and the wisdom of the spirit, the Bible testifies that there was no more breath in her. And she said, half of this was not told notable manifestations of songs hallelujah notable there were many men who were men of faith in the bible how come every time we talk about an icon of faith we suddenly move to the father abraham notable manifestations the bible says that a notable miracle happened and as a result because it was notable if it was just a miracle they would try to deny it but they said a notable miracle everybody saw this man crippled and then one moment they saw him standing they couldn't deny it they couldn't say it was stage managed for he had been there a long time the notable manifestation of the sons will begin to silence the systems of the world you know why God is allowing them to see all the evil and chaos because when the sons manifest it will be notable traceable impact that they can see and know that at a time t there was darkness and chaos why do you think the bible tells us that there was darkness and then god said let there be light that that statement would have been skipped away in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth and god said let there be light it would still make sense why did god have to contrast the darkness the chaos and the light is god's desire that we not only manifest as sons of light but enter a realm called notable manifestation undeniable manifestation unarguable manifestation of sons hallelujah when jesus walked upon the earth the scribes and the Pharisees had been teaching. You must understand. They were learned people. Humanly speaking, they were absolutely intelligent. But for the first time, they had a man preach and his context and expression was notable. And the people took note. They said, who is this? From whence cometh this man? Who is this? No table grace. And the Bible says he taught as one with authority and not as the scribes. There was something notable in his life. When he began to move, there was something about his love. It was notable. Hallelujah. And when he climbed upon the mountain, the Bible says about 5,000 people, aside women and children, followed him. Why? because his manifestation was notable i needed to understand that john had manifestations hallelujah but there was something notable say after me notable obvious something conspicuous something um undeniable and the unbelievers testified they said we cannot deny it we cannot deny it this is too notable there's no way we are going to try to cook up a story to stop god from receiving glory is notable 
God intends that your life becomes a notable sign and a notable wonder such that no matter what angle people come they will say this life is too notable we cannot but deny the hand of God we cannot but deny the favor of God there were many people who worked in the ministry of helps and hospitality but the Bible tells us there was a woman called Dorcas notable hallelujah to the point that when Dorcas died all the women were making reference they said no she had done see it wasn't just ordinary the way other people were doing she was a giver notable until we begin to move in notable realms of manifestations the world will find intelligent human ways the bible makes us understand that when jesus died they put certain people the military people to protect him hallelujah and if they suddenly came and saw the grave empty they would argue it and so god needed to do something notable the bible says on that resurrection morning i mean jesus had the ability to walk through and they would not see him at least peter did it peter walked out of the prison jesus would have kindly gone out of the grave but if he, if jesus just went out of the grave people will still argue it are you listening to me it had to be notable the moment a thing is notable it cannot be denied notable hallelujah notable i cannot look at this guy and say is a lady no matter what scientific evidences i bring this guy is a man because it is what notable there are notable features that attest to the fact that this is a man i cannot see this and call it a, assuming this is not a bible and call it a living thing this is a book hallelujah this cannot be a human being no matter what biological experiment i do I cannot prove that this is a human being now listen we live in a world where almost everything can be proven with science hallelujah people are trying to prove whether walking on the red sea was genuine and their scientists and physicists are trying to conjure certain things the world is trying to disprove the fact that jesus is lord hallelujah and right now there's the argument over transformation in lives and whether or not people are really healed when someone says he's healed they say just forget don't tell us that lie the end of all argument is a notable manifestation a notable manifestation hallelujah if the people had never seen the man at the gate beautiful they would conjure theories hallelujah and said the apostles went and cooked this up but everyone saw him they knew him they knew his parents are you following me his parents were known and then when this man got up it was a notable manifestation although they tried to argue they couldn't do much why because it was undeniable when you move in the realm of notable manifestations even satan will stop arguing about the fact that jesus is lord over your life satan gave a testimony about job hallelujah one of the few if not the only places in scripture where satan gave a testimony about a man satan gave a testimony that he could not break through the hedge of protection that was around you notable testimony then the bible says you are a city said you are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be what a notable city you cannot be hidden he said let your light so shine i want it to be noticed 
I want it to be notable because when men see it and you let them know that I'm the author then I will be glorified that's why there are few cases in the Bible where Jesus healed the sick and did supernatural things in the hidden there are few times did you know ironically right now we have more miracles in the church than outside the church but do you know when you study scripture there were more miracles outside than in the church hallelujah notable manifestations of songs the bible makes us to understand that creation is waiting for the sons to begin to do undeniable things there are certain people that when you talk about them in the world system people can argue and say forget is this guy a real man of god just forget what they are doing however there are certain people that have stepped into a realm called notable manifestations that unbelievers believers alike no one understand that there is the hand of god upon their lives we celebrate many evangelists in the world however there is a man called evangelist billy graham notable Kabo satabaya there was something about his life hallelujah and as a result whether the president of america is a freemason or not he would come to pay homage to this man called billy graham there are many evangelists that have blessed the nations and especially nigeria but we have one called evangelist reinhard bonke his name is almost like coca-cola when you call the name people say ah, i know reinhard bonke no table manifestations there's no denomination it doesn't matter what they believe or what they don't believe that will resist the presence of reinhard bonke no table manifestations hallelujah are you getting blessed it's not enough to begin to manifest the life the kingdom the power but we must step into a realm of undeniable manifestations that when you're exhibiting the character of the spirit it must be notable notable if you are a giver that you step into the realm of notable giving notable giving that your name will be synonymous every time i call your name what is notable about your life hallelujah bin laden did a notable manifestation although he was evil but it was a notable manifestation you will never read the history of terrorism without mentioning his name he earned himself that title notable manifestation hallelujah a woman in church history called mother teresa how many of you have read about her was she the only woman who loved people don't you love people but there was something notable are you listening to me notable notable about her life there were many apostles isn't it interesting how the bible did not give detailed account of all of them i wonder why because on the day of pentecost the bible never said peter received the holy ghost two days before the rest how come some people did not make it the archives of their lives i mean the bible dedicated two thirds of his writing in the new testament to just one man i think that's not fair enough room would have been given one one chapter for everybody to encourage diversity how be it there was a notable manifestation of an apostle hallelujah and tonight i've come to tell us that the world will stop denying the hand of god upon our lives when we step into no 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 when we before you say amen let me finish it when this is the condition 
when we step into that dimension of the notable manifestation of souls. Hallelujah. There is no man by the grace of God Almighty who will pass around here and deny the fact that kings and priests there is a gathering of eagles to the glory of God. There's no man who will deny that Jesus is Lord in this place. It's to the glory of God, I say it with all humility, that every time you step, there is something notable. We must get to that dimension where there is something notable in our lives. Are you listening to me? Notable. That your love life will become notable that every time they want to give an example of one who passionately loves the kingdom hallelujah they'll say Aaron do you know Aaron is an example notable if it is not notable then you will never be able to make impact and bring glory to the father hear me hearing is our father glorified when we bear much fruit. Hallelujah. Sharing is our Father glorified. That when you become a notable mother, such that it's not just your children who will attest to the fact that there's something about your life. Did you know that there are some families that the children prefer their neighbor's mother to be their mother or their neighbor's father because there's something notable. There are some families that whenever you are free, you want to go and relax there. Notable. The life and the hand of God is notable. There are certain people you want to be with. The moment you have any spare time, no matter how it inconveniences you, you want to be around them. There is something notable about their lives. The question the Lord is asking tonight is what is notable about your life? What is notable for the kingdom? Many of us have a little of power here, a little of passion for God here, a little of zeal, a little of grace, a little of um, the giving life, a little, a little. But this Bible, I need you to know that there were many people who were featured in this Bible but some were featured once and for all others were featured repeatedly in the Old Testament and they were featured in the part 2 of the Bible they couldn't be denied Abraham Elijah sorry and Enoch Elijah and who? Moses I'm sorry they had finished their course in the Old Testament what brought them to the transfiguration again? Notable manifestations such that God used Moses to typify the law and he used Elijah to typify the prophets. When God was showing me dimensions of his call upon my life, one time I had a vision and God used two notable men of God to reveal to me the patterns that I would walk in. And for years it bothered me. I said, Lord, why did you use these people? How many of you have had dreams where God used someone's face to teach you something? When God is talking about love, then you see, why was it not your face? Hallelujah. No table manifestations of sin. The Lord wants us to step into that dimension where we begin to move in notable dimensions of the miraculous notable dimensions. I cried and I prayed. I told God yesterday you know, while I was just praying in the night expressing my heart to the Lord and I told him, I said, Lord, take me to that dimension of notable, a notable life where everything about my life becomes an object of conversation to the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. That people look and say, why 
why does he talk this way why is it that um, every time he speaks there seems to be something notable there are many people that sing on stage I, I always say it can sing on stage and raise a song and as you are going back your song dies with you there the people who are clapping cannot even remember what you sang hallelujah and then someone else will come on stage and sing the exact same song and that song will linger in your spirit for days and weeks every time the holy spirit wants you to worship that's the song even if you don't know everything about the song it could be a phrase it will remain in your spirit and every time you sing you see the face of the one who sang notable there are certain meetings that when you enter you get blessed and you go out but there are certain meetings when you enter you see that the presence of God in that atmosphere is notable notable hallelujah that when you sit there is the consciousness that the glory of God is in this place there is a consciousness that God in the midst of his people is mighty how many of you have taken an unbeliever for a program and this is someone that is a noise maker and will not be patient and say I'll sit down for five minutes and he sits down and after ten minutes you see a sense of reverence and a contemplation within his an intrapersonal contemplation something notable is happening to him hallelujah the Bible makes us to understand that on the day of Pentecost something notable happened that was not the first time they were celebrating Pentecost are you following me now 50 days after the ascension of Jesus something notable happened and it attracted everyone to come and the Bible says that they saw men filled with the Holy Ghost and were speaking and when Peter spoke there was something notable about his speech and as a result 3,000 people 3,000 people came to the Lord hear me it's time for everything about our lives to become notable are you listening to me it's time for what everything about our lives to become notable that every time you stand and you minister the word there is something notable an identity that validates that Christ is at work in your life come Steve please play this guitar notable there are many people that play the guitar there are many people that play all of these instruments what is it about the man we call Steve Strings it's not because he sings unusual songs necessarily go ahead and play Steve notable there is something I know a lot of people professional people that play guitar but there is something notable hallelujah and every time you hear him whether you like what he's playing or not you cannot deny that this comes from a realm that is not of the earth there are certain people that when they speak their wisdom is notable the Bible calls certain people wise men from the east there were many men from the east but their wisdom was notable hallelujah there's got to be something notable about your life for the kingdom hallelujah tonight we are going to rise above that average and that ordinary life we are going to rise above that limitation of nominal Christianity. It's time for your Christianity to be notable. Not just notable in church. It's time for people to begin to argue and discuss about your passion for God. It's time for
for people to begin to discuss the grace of God upon your life the workings of the spirit that every time they are talking about intimacy with the Holy Spirit they tell them can you see how I covet Shei's dimension of intimacy there's something notable about her intimacy I've had the opportunity of counseling and talking with a number of people about the ministry of the Holy Spirit in their lives and there are about three or four of them that have attained a realm I call notable intimacy hallelujah that at the end of speaking with them I had to go back to God and cry and say God what 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 did these people do that brought you into that depth of intimacy hallelujah a notable life that every time people see you your life becomes a motivation because there is something notable every time they are talking about an example of a true servant of God can your name be called for notable kingdom stewardship every time they are talking about men and women who demonstrate um, what it means to be prosperous and yet godly can your name come in the midst of that notable discussion Acts chapter 4 verse 16 it says a notable miracle has been performed and we cannot deny it I look forward to the time when in and through my life we will keep our generation stand still and say do you have any other argument as to why you think Jesus will not be Lord on this earth where we will dismiss all the facts and figures and all the things that people use to deny the fact that Jesus is Lord I look forward to a time when a sorcerer and a diviner is doing whatever he has to do and then you step into that place unknowingly and the jazz stops working notable carbo satire without speaking in tongues and making noise let me tell you the world is tired of our noise what they need is the notable manifestation of sons and so we can preach and sweat on stage and they cross their legs but the moment they see something notable they will arise and say what is this notable for as long as you love like unbelievers love Christ cannot be glorified because it doesn't make any difference when your love becomes notable then it will compel men to know that there is an ability at work in you that is not human for as long as your wisdom is regular and natural I look forward to a time when the government will run to the church and say we we are confused we don't know where to go politically economically and the church will say oh yes we know let it be as it were in the days of Daniel that when there was confusion and chaos in Babylon because the king forgot his dream and the king forgot he didn't even know the interpretation all the sorcerers and diviners failed and the Bible says that there was need for a man who had the spirit of God in a notable fashion and Daniel stepped out the king said I will kill all of you and Daniel said there's, there's no cause for alarm just give me one night I will bring a notable result and he got up in the morning and says oh king let me tell you your dream and he began to astonish him and he said I testify that the spirit of the gods I testify the spirit of the gods is upon him the Bible says when they were tested he was found ten times better ten times better 
was a testimony that the hand of God was upon his life. The Bible talks about a man called Job. He said Job was the greatest man in the East. They were prosperous people. The East was known for prosperity and wisdom. How be it? It was notable. We must begin to make notable impact. Notable impact in our community. When the church builds a borehole in a community and builds a school, let me tell you something. The government will have no option but to involve the church in the decision making of that environment. The reason why we pray in tongues and shout and the world is not moved by our tongues and our revelation is because it is not yet notable. Hallelujah. That every time you go to greet your auntie or your uncle, they receive you with such warm reception because they have marked it that every time you greet them, a door is open. So there's something notable about your life. The moment you say, I am coming, they get very excited. Do you know that there are some people you long for them to visit you? There are some people you long for them to come and say hello because there is something notable about their lives. We are going to be raising a cry. I cried out my life yesterday. I said, Lord, a notable life. My generation must know that a son an ambassador of the kingdom has stepped his feet upon this environment for the glory of the king for the glory of the king notable that your excellence becomes notable that your wisdom becomes notable that your life becomes notable that the grace of God upon your life becomes undeniable such that although you are not the firstborn in the family they will never make a decision without inquiring of you somehow they know that your impute is relevant not just because you are prosperous but because the hand the spirit of the lord is upon you hallelujah that in your department and in your faculty they will note you for certain things when it comes to the affairs of wisdom they know that the wisdom of god resides upon a citizen when the king of syria sent naaman with a letter and the king of israel was was disturbed elisha now elisha said oh king why are you worried he said send the man to me and let him know that there is a prophet in israel send him let him know that god has ambassadors who are still alive and are still doing well i look forward to the time when things are not going on in your room and your house and you step in and say lord prove that an ambassador lives in this room prove that an ambassador lives in this place where your life and every activity around your life becomes notable when they make you a faculty president or a departmental president or a pastor or a minister that there will be something about your dispensation that will enter the archives of history that when so 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 and so 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 person was here there was something notable how many of us desire that kind of life if you truly want to bring glory to the king then you must desire the notable manifestations of sons notable let me give you a testimony to the glory of god some years ago they brought a lady from congo who had some demonic things around her life very very terrible hallelujah 
and when that lady came she was supposed to come and see me I used to sit down near the Sunday school building and I just sat there I was just meditating and as soon as this lady stepped close she wouldn't move further again and the people said let's go they said I'm not going and then at a point they forced her and the moment she stepped in just where I was seated she just started shouting she said God is in this place God is in this place God is in this place and that's how she fell under the power of God and I tell you the truth instantly I sat down I was sitting there and I said Satan go notable manifestation of sons there are many of us that need to look at our parents and say I speak to you enough is enough notable and suddenly things begin to change around their lives and they look at you and say what is it about your life and then you let them know that he is Lord and I live to bring him glory until your life is notable the king cannot be glorified through your life are you listening to me there's got to be something notable whenever people are in trouble that they can run to you because you have been noted for certain things whenever people need solutions they can run to you because you have been notable and the bible says it shall come to pass that the mountain of the lord will be exalted to a notable point and he said all nations shall flow to it because it will become a house of prayer it will become a house of solutions it will become a house of breakthrough a house of increase and that's what god is doing by his spirit in koinonia making this house a notable place notable for signs and wonders notable for impact and transformation notable for the manifestation of the law of the character of the spirit notable for the grace and the hand of god notable for raising giants and champions and great men notable for communicating the mind and the counsel of the spirit for every season and i call you tonight to join in this quest of having a notable life enough of the ordinary life enough of the life that people can argue and argue about and say we are not even sure whether he loves god or not let me tell you when people are arguing whether or not you are a christian your life is not yet notable hallelujah when people look and say femi sorry we are arguing are you really filled with the holy ghost just settle this for us don't answer that question go back and lock yourself and say lord my life must be notable there are many people who try to replace this notable grace by wearing suits and speaking good english none of this will cover for the notable hand of god for your life i mustn't wear nice suit and speak with color and say okay i'm here bless you in the name of the lord jesus um i can bless your life invite me to preach well in your church the hand of god upon your life ought to be undeniable are you listening to me the bible says when jesus was born there was a notable star there were many stars but there was one notable star and the bible says on account of that star people began to flood into that place because a star was lifted and it was directly above that house that the lord will make your life like a star that people will flood and come and say what is it about the grace of god upon your life what is it about the hand of god what wisdom is this what knowledge is this hear me if you don't covet this thing that i'm preaching you will live an ordinary life and you will end up being frustrated the secret of impact that will bring glory to god especially in this generation of westernization and controversy there are so many options we need a notable manifestation of sons a 
notable manifestation of sons that when we are talking about givers the world will not dare say that they are on the top of the list in showing welfare and hospitality that the church will arise whenever there is disaster before the government finish their meeting we will have sons of the kingdom who are empowered to step in and help the nations the notable hand of God upon our lives we look forward to times when when doctors conclude about people the church is already working in that dimension right now there are several sicknesses that even the hospital cannot diagnose and they tell them look I don't know what to tell you try God that's the only thing I know just try it's my desire that every one of us step into this notable lifestyle a notable lifestyle noted by believers and by unbelievers that the community in Zaria the community in Abu, the community in Kaduna State the community in Nigeria will know that he reigns through your life you know every time we sing that song Lord you reign forever when we get to the place that says you reign you reign you reign you reign one night I was singing that song and when I finished singing suddenly my spirit I had a voice saying you reign so I twisted the song a little then when I sing you reign after a while I switch it I say I reign I reign I reign cuz you reign I reign I reign I reign cuz you reign the scripture that John Fa shared he said the Lord stands in the congregation of the mighty and begins they are not the congregation of the small God calls you mighty it's a meeting of mighty men and God is saying mighty men how come you have not delivered the poor and oppressed why are things going on as though you are not alive Archbishop Benson Idahosa a man who lived a notable lifestyle during the popular Benin Witch Festival you will never talk about the history of revival in Nigeria without talking about the Benin Witch Festival and the impact of Archbishop Benson Idahosa all the witches were going to come from the world and gather in Benin for a conference and Idahosa said not when I'm alive not when I'm in Benin, it will not hold. No table audacity. And the media challenged him. He said it will not hold. And a few days or about a day to the meeting, they had to call a press conference of the chief of the witches. This is recorded on video. The chief of the witches and Archbishop Benson Idahosa. And they sat down. And the media people interviewed them they said all kinds of things and when the presenter was about rounding up it also said wait don't round up i have something to say and he turned and looked at the man and said before the whole country answer now are you a witch be careful as you give this answer because you may fall down and die now are you a witch answer the country And the man kept quiet for a while. This was a king of the witches here in Nigeria, from India, Asia, all over. And Idahosa said, I'm listening. Guess what the man said? No. Idahosa said, You can close the program. An ambassador, alive and active. What a notable life. He was told that at a point he was traveling and armed robbers blocked them hey come out lie down 
and he told he was surprised the driver was afraid he told he, he said park he told the driver park and he came out and dressed his clothes and the young brothers were lie down light and he looked at them he said three things must happen to you now you are going to choose either to be paralyzed to die or to be blind but what must happen to you right now now listen I'm not just saying this the Bible says follow them who through faith and patience what kind of life is that hallelujah it was said of Bishop Oedeko that armed robbers came and kidnapped his daughter and they were running out and he said if I am a servant of God they will not cross my gate as soon as they got to the gate something happened they started arguing with one another and they brought back the child do you believe this let me share with you a testimony to the glory of God I've shared the testimony we're lying down peacefully in our house when a thief came and entered and when he entered he went to uh, the table where we keep our laptops and he carried my laptop and when he carried it before you know my brothers got up you know tried to pursue the guy the guy ran opened the door and ran away and it was in the middle of that chaos i woke up and i said what's happening and he said the thief had gone away with my laptop and i looked and there was no laptop and i got up i said well lord two things will happen the laptop will come back or you give me money to buy a new one in any case you are lord hallelujah and then suddenly i saw a vision of an angel and he just did this with his hands and i didn't say anything hear me friends god is my witness they are here to testify seven hours later that laptop was back on the table we didn't raise any alarm the people in this in the in our neighborhood took it upon themselves and they pursued that armed robber and went to his house he hid it under the carpet in their house they brought it out this was the case i was counseling people in school when they called me and said please come they had to go and bring his brother in um, where, um the military cantonment what do we call it basawa and he came wanting to come and just plead with me and the guy packed his things and ran out of zaria a time will come when somebody wants to harm you he will reconsider and say is he worth it is the is he worth it the word of god says touch not my anointed do my prophets no harm when you begin to say ah witches are disturbing me devils are this and that will you press into god to a notable dimension where the demons and devils will reconsider and say is he worth it or are we trying to frustrate ourselves for nothing that you become so excellent and blameless that your that your lecturer will have no basis of implicating you the bible says they look for an occasion to implicate daniel and they didn't find anyone rise up on your feet it's a communion service so we we'll have to pray so that we'll quickly take the communion go ahead and bless the lord notable manifestations of sons go ahead and begin to bless the name of the lord go ahead and bless his name and say lord notable manifestations notable from today by the hand of god the grace of god upon my life is notable 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 the wisdom of god upon my life is becoming notable go ahead and pray my world life is notable my understanding my insight to the world is notable your prosperity upon my life is notable the goodness of god upon my life becoming notable 
are the ones of my hands, no table. Go ahead and pray. Pray for your ministry. Pray for your life. Pray for your fellowship. Pray for your business. For your group. No table. 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 No no table longevity of God. No table wealth and prosperity. No table anointing. No table power. No table results. No table results. Undeniable. That the hand of God upon your life becomes notable. That it becomes notable. Make sure you are praying that the world will see and know that there is a God. That the world will see. That your parents will see. That your community will see. Everything about your life notable. Your conduct notable. The manifestation of the gift of the Spirit. When our lives become notable, then the world will reckon with the fact that God is at work in our lives. When our lives, when our passion for God, when our zeal for His house, when our giving, when our the manifestations of His grace, His power, His wisdom, When it becomes obvious, undeniable, then there will be no argument again. It's foolish to argue with notable results. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Now tonight is a communion service. And we're going to be taking the communion. Now, I want you to take the communion with understanding and revelation. And I'll be reading two scriptures very quickly. John. John chapter 6. Brothers and sisters, I'd like you to cherish what God is doing in our midst. He's truly making us kings and priests unto our God. Hallelujah. Verse 35, John 6, 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life, and he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Hallelujah. Verse 53, just jump quickly to verse 53. And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, Ye have what? No life in you. 
is not talking about the biological life the manifestation of the divine life that will make you notable notable he who eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood had eternal life and i will raise him up at the last day for my flesh is food indeed and my blood is drink indeed 56 he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth with me and i in him hallelujah jesus is saying for every time you partake of the communion you reenact you reenact the revelation of your oneness are you listening to me every time you take the communion you realize that you is in the realm of the spirit there is a renewal of the fact that you are one with christ and that you are a possessor of the god life a life that is beyond sickness a life that is beyond failure a life that is beyond weakness are you listening to me the divine life above and beyond the limitations of the flesh very quickly let me show you something in second corinthians I understand for many of you who have observed you will notice that there has been an escalation of the death of fathers how many of you have taken note of that people's fathers just dying and the rate at which people are falling ill and falling sick but the Bible says there is a bomb in Gilead I want to show you a spiritual mystery tonight turn with me Sorry, First Corinthians. First Corinthians 11. How that the communion is a spiritual principle that is an antidote to sickness, an antidote to weakness, and an antidote to the plague of death. Hallelujah. Verse 23. For I have received of the, of the Lord that which I also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is, did he say this is bread? He said, This is my body, which is broken for you, broken for your sickness, broken for your weakness, broken for your limitation. Are you following me now? He said do this in remembrance of me after the same manner also the cup and when he had supped saying this is the cup of the new testament in my blood these do as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me hallelujah follow me to verse 28 but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Verse 30. For this cause, stop. For not taking the communion with the understanding and the revelation of what it is empowered to do. There are three things that happen. For this cause, many are number one, weak. Many are number two, sick. And many sleep so when the communion is taken with understanding and revelation it gives you supernatural strength as ordinary as this looks humanly this is just bread and cake or, or drink or whatever but that there is a revelation in the spirit that this is what the bible calls the bam in Gilead that when there is a plague a plague of weakness a plague of sickness the midst of the lord's body that his body was broken in exchange for your strength in exchange for your weakness in exchange so taking that reenacts in the realm of the spirit the blessing of strength the blessing of health the blessing of longevity are you following me now and so we are taking this communion tonight with the understanding that there will be a supernatural impartation of strength spiritual strength 
mental strength and physical strength and we are taking this that by the revelation of Jesus Christ his body broken for us that no sickness listen to me no devil no demon will survive your body as you take off this communion and lastly that with this communion we end the plague of death over our lives and our families listen you need to believe this there is many people suffer because we do not understand the principles that God has put to address certain issues there's no point arguing over what God has said the mystery of the communion hallelujah the worshipers will lead us will quickly do this as we share please if you don't get just be patient I hope the cups go round I invite the ministers please as many just come we have one two three four five six seven eight nine seven twelve need at least twelve people please hallelujah at least to help people praise God father in the name of Jesus I pray over this communion this is ordinary drink and bread but we declare that the impartation of the Holy Ghost comes upon it in the name of Jesus that as we take this communion tonight it becomes a supernatural antidote against weakness we banish weakness even that by the mystery of the holy communion in the name of the lord jesus we banish sickness from our camp we banish sickness from the body in the name of the lord jesus and father every covenant of death upon everyone's life and over our families as we take the communion an end comes to it let the plague stop in the name of the lord jesus Amen. therefore we bless this communion and we call it anointed in the name of jesus servants of god you can just pick it and walk around we may have some station some people should service those outside please do that quickly don't take it yet just take the cup and the bread hallelujah please let's have more people yeah, Pastor, you can have this. Let's have some people go outside. Please do it. Make it snappy. Just make sure you have the, the bread and the cup. And begin to pray prayerfully. Yes, Pastor Shem. What is happening in this place? Please let's make it snappy. Make up our catabara rabosha. Man to soto pagada balarabasha. Reketa rabosha. Man to soto reketa balarabasha. Reketa balarabasha. Reketa balarabasha. Reketa balarabasha. Reketa balarabasha. Just pick the cup and the bread. That's what we call. You are born in the midst of the 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 that's what we call.
Hallelujah. Please let's do it very quickly, very quickly. Let the ministers help out. Just ensure you have the bread and the cup inside, outside. Hallelujah. In one minute, I'd like you to pray and express your heart. What you're trusting that the Lord caused this to do in your life. This is not just a religious ritual. In one minute, I like this communion to make sense to you. Please, the welfare, let's have more. Looks like there are still people more. As many who have, even if you don't have, you can get the bread. Let's let's save time. If you've not gotten the cup, please just lift hands. All right, please locate them and let everyone have it. There's more of the cup here. We're taking the bread, just pick a piece and pass it around very quickly. Let's do it quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of us have not gotten the cup or the bread? Hallelujah. Please, can we make this snappy? Let's do it really fast. Just keep your hands lifted. Please locate them and, and the ministers turn so that you can. The Bible says that Jesus said if you eat. Please, um, Shade, there are people here. Is it the cup or the, the bread? Okay. Please, the bread. Just pick a piece and pass it around very quickly. Pass it round very quickly. Father, we declare in the name of the Lord Jesus that this is a sacred spiritual exercise. We are taking this to end the plague of death, to end the plague of weakness, to end the plague of sickness. You said we should do this in remembrance of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now together we are going to take the bread and the cup. Even, even if we've taken it and you've not gotten it, um, you can take that later on. Who has the bread? I see that they are not. Okay, please. Careful, sorry. I think you can get just get another one uh, Jimmy has one there please I need everybody to have it let's do it quickly tumors will die growth will go demonic oppressions will leave plague of death will end who has the bread I'm not sure the ministers have the bread please all have this do we all have this please let me have the remaining so you can pick one for yourselves that's all right okay here's the bread do we have any who 
doesn't have okay. everybody you've taken your own hallelujah praise the Lord now look up please this is ordinary bread hallelujah and this is ordinary wine or juice or zobo or whatever it is how be it I need you in one moment to cease looking at this as just bread and a cup there is a spiritual mystery are you listening to me Jesus said if you eat this is my flesh and if you take this is my blood that for every time you do this you enact a mystery an inexplainable mystery in the realm of the spirit that dispels weakness dispels sickness and dispels death and after tonight's communion we will say oh death where is your sting oh grave where is your strength enough of dying around it's happening all over the country enough of sickness and weakness Lord we believe father anoint this even as we take it we bless it in the name of the father of the son and of the holy spirit together now let's take it go ahead and begin to pray in the spirit please pass the cups round go ahead and begin to pray in the spirit Say the mystery of the body and the cup. Leba kaparada baseketeba. Go ahead and challenge weakness, challenge sickness, challenge death. In the name of Jesus, we are obedient to the ordinances of God. Challenge every unfaithfulness over your life your family members no more death no more loss no more weakness every pain challenge it in the name of Jesus for so when our obedience is complete God is committed to perform when your obedience is complete Cancers die in the name of Jesus. Tumors die in the name of Jesus. Fibers be gone. Demonic oppression be gone. Every mental problem by the power of the communion. Oh, then, where is thy thing? We banish the hand of death. Banish the plague of death. We receive strength, strength, energy, vitality, longevity. Though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil. For thou art with us, thy rod and thy staff, thou preparest a table. For us, in the presence of our enemies, you anoint our heads with oil and our cup of our soul. Surely goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our life. Health, wealth, longevity, longevity. Hallelujah. Declare, I shall not die, but leave to declare. Go ahead and declare, I refuse it. So kataba, don't take it for granted. Don't take what you are doing for granted. We are operating under instruction. Don't take it for granted. We refuse to mourn any dead. Let the plague of death. Take it far from the car. 
For there are ambassadors. The plague of death. The plague of accidents. The plague of unrobbery. The plague of war. We decree it. We are preserved. According to Job 5. In Sunday, we are preserved. Preserved from the spotted dogs of men. Because on our both, we understand the principles by which our kingdom operates. And we enact that principle. Let it be registered in the realm of the spirit. More than conquerors. We live long. We live strong. We live happy. We live healthy. Graceful. Favor. Peaceful. Making it back. We fear no evil. We are immune against robbers, immune against wicked men, immune against sickness, immune against demonic oppression. There's freedom by the power and the revelation. For when our obedience is complete, then God watches over his work to perform it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a practice that you can go on with. Don't idolize it. That's the trouble with people. When we begin to do things like this, we idolize it. It must be administered within the context of the world. Lord, we thank you for tonight's meeting. We'll be noted the goodness of God upon our lives will be notable. The hand of God upon our lives will be notable. The favor of God upon our lives will be notable. The character of the Spirit upon our lives will be notable. Our impact and increase the undeniable results will be notable Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, this is your first time worshiping with us very quickly. We are out of time. I'd like you to leave your seat and walk up quickly inside, in the overflow, outside. Appreciate them. If this is your first time, please, I'd like you to come out. Just walk up. We love you. We respect you. Please appreciate them. Do it very, very quickly. We are out of time. Hallelujah. I like you to jump up like a general and come very quickly. You are the light of the world. A city. Wow. I appreciate them. Come on. Give them a big, big koinonia welcome. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's good to have every one of you. Can we appreciate them? Give them a big, big koinonia. God bless you. Hallelujah. It's our joy and pleasure to have you worship with us. This is koinonia. God is doing great things. Hallelujah. Bringing us into points of intimacy with his spirit and equipping us to make great impact for the kingdom. Hallelujah. And so I welcome every one of you. Thank you so much for making our time. We love you. We respect you. Very quickly, we want to pray and prophesy. I need you to understand that every one of us here is anointed, full of God's spirit. And when we bless you, you are blessed. Hallelujah. So we want to stretch our hands and pray for you. And all I'd like you to do is just receive it into your spirit and believe. Saints of God, let's stretch our hands from all over the building. And just pray. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. 
and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye